gun. Metal Monday. Metal Monday and it, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> which is a damn shame because I was like, yeah, I, thought I, I, well, I thought I liked it. I think I, you did. I think I think it was you, Tom. I think Jeff. Maybe, Jeff, maybe, maybe. I, maybe I got a pity. Like I don't know. Did we I share like it Metal anywhere Monday. though? I don't remember. Sharing. No, we didn't. I never share Metal Mondays though. That's the thing. I just post it on the the TFG. Thing. We should share them to the Warhammer community. Just do it on the community sites. Oh really? Like just Warhammer, not the war, not the official one, but the other one, the fan run ones. Okay, they I might can appreciate it more. Yeah, yeah, the generic people. The, the gen- yeah, for the generic people out there. Yeah. Are you taking the nice BAO or are you or are you judging BAO? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play. You gonna play? Yeah, I'm gonna play. Good. I want to know that my th- Tuesday night was not wasted. It was not. Because he already knows it was wasted coaching me that night, so he he has. Oh yeah, how did that go? I guess we can talk about it. But. It's streaming. Oh, that's right. I saw that. Yeah. And I, I don't know how that happened. I blame Tom. I ran out of time. Actually, I blame. Uh, well, John. I mean, we, we we only got to round three, but we were taking our time a little bit. Slash, I need to be faster. Well, that's already well established. You know what? I'm just saying it's well established. Sometimes slow and steady is better. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. I've heard that's a thing. Evening, <laughs> unless you're being streamed at like a major GT or something, then it's then it's then nah, it's the thing is you had you had to killed some knights. That's which true. Was good, so you were uh, you would have dealt with both the shooting knights probably on turn four, and mm-hmm. then you know, yeah, turn five maybe you win it. Maybe yeah. Uh, like coming back, but John also forgot he had recon for like two turns. Good and I like, could have moved like two inches to the right. Got yeah. Good evening, evening, Mr. Inquisitor. Rap dog. Hello. Can't see shit. No. I'll let you. Yeah, most of the stream will be uh, either one of us le- leaning in to see what. Why don't you make it bigger? Right. Okay, let me, let me do that. Okay. Well, we've got our. our tech I think guys. John, I think our tech guy's working on that. I think John heard that. Yeah. I just want you to nod and occasionally give us a thumbs up. You shouldn't even have to say <laughs> <laughs> What he's supposed to be doing is the three. But he won't do it. He counts yeah? it down all the way. Yeah. Uh-huh. The three and then the silent. <laughs> 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 now he does it. Yeah. All right, jackass. I tell my kid not to be on that phone. <laughs> well, phone. I have to look up information. Plus, I'm not your kid. Yeah. I do as I say. much better than you. <laughs> True. <laughs> But I'm surprised that your kid has a phone. Yeah. She doesn't. I'm just like, okay. Oh, I was going to say, did you ever like one of those like, <laughs> giant phones? Well, I mean, but sometimes I've seen people give like it's a giant. old phones. You can't trade in for it's anything. A giant Lego. She has one of those toy phones that you like hit the thing and it makes a noise. Yeah. It's a song, yeah. Oh, my God. All right, let me get information up and then we can start. You need this? No, not. I don't care about your information. Wow. See, this is what I deal with any time. You're feeling my pain. Except I don't feel pain. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a lawyer. <laughs> he doesn't feel pain. That's true, actually. I forgot about that. <laughs> There's a process they go to once they pass the bar. Are we live? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <sure. laughs> I just haven't officially started yet. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. You're up on the screen. Yeah, I know. I okay. haven't officially started yet. Hold on. I thought you said you were going to be quiet over there. I didn't say I was going to be quiet. I was just quiet at the moment. He just the moment. Up. I'm just looking for the info. Uh, well, welcome to Listening TFG through the headphones is weird because there's a delay. Yes. So I'm hearing what was said like five seconds ago. If Adam's not why, right, we why do you Why do you, uh, why are you listening through the headphones? Because I wanted to make sure that they could hear us. Oh. So we didn't have to deal with any of those issues like the last couple times. Okay. We were like, nice. hey, we can't hear anybody. Oh, yeah. Well, tonight's a special episode. All right. Hey, everybody. Because <laughs> Jeff's not in charge. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. As you can see, we have uh, Bossy Jeff and Butters with us today. That's me. <laughs> it gets you every time without fail. It's it fantastic. does, because you do that voice. Yeah. It's so cute. I wouldn't say, eh, whatever. Too late. It is cute. I'm like an alcoholic Butters. <sighs> sure. I am. Um, as you, as everyone well know, there's there's a we have a big plate today. Yeah, a lot of things going on. <clears throat> um, first, a couple of housekeeping things out of the way. I want to mention um, that uh, for those in the Southern California area, 
there's a there's a tournament called the Dice Hammer GT in the second week of December, I believe. No, it's in August. Oh, no, September. <laughs> no, it's in September. <laughs> September. Yes. Yeah. August is our yeah. the GT our store runs. Um, I believe it's September twelfth and thirteenth. I think it's the second weekend, or maybe the third. I think it's the second. Um, go to if you want to go to. There's still tickets available. Go to Dice Hammer. Uh, Dice Hammer on Facebook. Look up Dice Hammer. It's on there. All the information's on there. It's a store in Orange County. Oh, they're holding it at a bowling alley, actually. And it's being held at a bowling alley. Yeah. Which is wow. wild. <laughs> which is different. Yeah. So after you finish your games, you can bowl a few frames. Most <laughs> bowling alleys have great bars. So. Yes. It's true. With yes. very cheap drinks. Yeah. That's why I would go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and food, food's right there. Yeah. If you want to eat instead of drink. Um... They do have, like I said, they do have space available. So uh, just look up uh, Dice Hammer on uh, Facebook, which is how I usually find it, mm -hmm. and uh, give it a look. Um, as you can see, we're lounging on the couch today. Uh, John's doing something out in the corner. I don't know. I'll paint eventually. He's painting like a, what is it? Is that a Castellan robot? That's a Castellan, yeah. It's a pure knight. Oh, it's robot. a robot. Not oh. robots. It's kind of a robot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big robot. Doesn't have a crew. I was. Um, Does have a crew. That's true. I was at the store and I got triggered earlier today because there's a group of guys. Was it a microaggression? I guess. Is it, there's a group of guys that play using the Gundam models. No. Are you familiar with those? No. <laughs> no, you're not familiar. Or no, you don't want me to talk about it. No, I'm not okay with any of this. Well, let me tell you what they're playing, and then they, we'll see how far you go. Okay. Were they actually playing, like, some form of Gundam tabletop? Yeah, what they have is they have their own set of home, house rules, home homebrew rules for Gundam models mm -hmm. that you build and, you know, whatever. Because okay. they're fully articulated, they're way better than any, but they also cost a lot. Mm -hmm. But they weren't. They were, but the type of Gundam models they use, and this is what triggers me, uh -oh. <laughs> um, uh -oh. there's a type of Gundam model that's shaped like a teddy bear. Why? Huh? Why? Because it's in the canon. It's in the cartoon or whatever. There's a so Gundam make teddy bear in this cartoon and people are okay with this and still play it? They're, they have not just one. There's like a number of them. So like a <laughs> whole crew of teddy bear Gundams. Yes. Nice. So what is it like the Care, Care Bears? Bears yeah, I was going to say Care Bears got pissed and decided to take it out in the galaxy. It's more or less what it is. Okay, do they paint them like Care Bears? Though? No, they're not painted. They're Gundams. So they already come in the colors that... Pre-painted. So did they pre repaint it. Did they yeah. repaint them like Care Bears? <laughs> no. <laughs> that might make it worse. They should. Um, you're going to come in. So every time I see it, it just, I don't know. It just bugs me. You know, it's, it's like those, like, you know, Hello Kitty or, like, Sailor Moon or, you know, armies that people do for 40K. I know? guess, but I, I, guess it, I guess it's canon. Yeah. But, um, but that's all they play. They don't Hello use Kitty. any of the other Gundam models. Huh. So it's just teddy bears. Yeah. Huh. And these aren't kids. Well, clearly, no, not that. I did I not. Mean, I really did not expect that. <laughs> that was actually the one part of your story that made sense to me. <laughs> the kids are all playing adult games with adult model, with adult, uh, with adult looking models as opposed to teddy bears. Yeah. <laughs> so that was earlier. That was earlier today. Huh. Was there a point to that story memes. or not? Insert memes. <laughs> So uh, I forget now. I forget okay. why. We're just going to start calling you John Cook because you're not making any sense. I make perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> and my stories aren't 30 years old. Um, the 30 year old stories are still pretty good. <laughs> the, other, the other thing coming up, for those that don't know, is, is uh, Nova Open has a charity auction that, uh, no, charity raffle that they do every year. Mm -hmm. uh, this year it features a number of different armies, uh, painted armies. Uh, I think there's a Sons of Horrors painted uh, 30k army, an Ultramarines painted army. I think there's something for Malifaux. There's a Word Bearers uh, 30k. Word, oh, it's Word Bearers yeah. 30k, not uh, Sons and, of Horrors. And we all know that you're most excited, which is why you're wearing blue. They're Ultramarines offering. I meant Beautiful. Ultramarines. Oh, you did? Well, I'm just yes. re reiterating how much you love the Ultramarines. And, and why? And that's because you're wearing blue. And like any other child, how you don't listen. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, that was off air. There's a. <laughs> Edit it out. Edit it out. <laughs> Continuity error for the win. <laughs> and so, um, there's that. There's um, uh, different game systems. Star, there's Star Wars. I think they have both sides, Imperial and the Rebels, uh, fully painted. Um, but more importantly, there's a Warlord tying up for grabs. So, uh, I believe it's, I want to say $2 a ticket. Which makes and, sense. And you can... Uh, 
you can buy a ticket for individual prizes. You don't. It's not right, one so ticket. Right. So you're in the Warlord Titan pool, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you want to just go all in on the Warlord Titan, you just go all in on the mm-hmm. Warlord Titan. Um, Drop a quick hundo, <laughs> and maybe get lucky. That's yeah. still that's still much cheaper than you. Yeah. An actual <laughs> Warlord yeah. Titan, and it's painted. <laughs> yeah. I think um, the other <laughs> after entries are a dollar each. You guys see Mr. Inquisitor's comment? No. no. But fuck those care bears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Although my daughter has that's like, the full collection of Care Bears. <laughs> Mr. Inquisitor, that's what we call a keeper? <laughs> yes. Um, so so just go to, I believe it's NovaOpenCharities.org, or just go to Nova Open. Use the internet to search. Um, yes. You, Use Google. You can, you can find it. And it I've like heard said, it can it's be two dollars. It's $2, $2 an entry for the Warlord, and I believe $1 for a lot of the other ones. Yeah. But every little bit helps because it goes to charity. I have yeah. heard Google is a good tool for finding things. <laughs> I still yes. refuse to try it, but that's okay. We all know you're still slavishly sticking to Bing. We get it. <laughs> what's, a, what's a Bing? Zing. What's a Bing? I use Yahoo. Oh my God! There Yahoo go. exclusive. I still, bro. I still have my Yahoo email account. Oh, oh man. Adam. I still <laughs> use it. I've had it for. Did you get the email that they're closing down and they thank you for your years of service yet? That's or? Hotmail. Oh, that's God. Not, uh, that's right. Hey, I, my first email account was a Hotmail account. Well, my first oh, email mine, account was like... Well, oh, no, mine was AOL. Mine. Oh, it was yeah. AOL. Yeah, yeah. AOL. Thank you. Yep. My, uh, my second one was uh, Earthlink. Oh, yeah. my God. Good old I Earthlink. Earthlink. But I do have uh, AOL to thank to give me the, one of the best email addresses ever because they said, you know, when you do the random... They do the random e- uh, username or yeah. email yeah. for you if you... They don't like the one you keep trying to choose. Mm-hmm. Mine was A S O L and then a bunch of numbers. Okay. So then I dropped all the numbers and just stayed with A S O L. As in pronounce like, it. Asshole. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking A S O L. Well, that's the name, but I would stop at the L. <laughs> so even if you say that part, it still comes out right. I used that one for like 10 years. All right. <laughs> but I've had the Yahoo one for since 96. I've had Gmail for years now, and I don't plan on changing anytime soon. I've had Same Gmail. Here. Well, it depends which account, but I've had Gmail for a while now. My older, my oldest brother is one of the people who actually got in, managed to get an invite to the Gmail beta when they were launching it. <laughs> it's one of the few things he actually brags about. That's something he brags about. He's a tech guy. He's like, super, like he has software friends. Hey, check out our email. <laughs> yeah. Could you email someone? Established. <laughs> well, no, but like this was their foray into it, right? This was like because before that they were just a search engine, and then they're like, oh, guys, we're gonna do mail, and everyone was like, oh my god, Google's doing mail. What is what is this? This was before we got used to the idea of companies owning the world again, like Amazon, you know. Or AOL. <laughs> Wait, we're used to that now? <laughs> I missed that memo where I'm supposed to be used to that. You're used to it. I, for one, welcome it. our Google overlords. I think it's the Amazon overlords, right? I mean, at this point, they're going to merge, and it's going to actually be like... It's all going to be one of it. It's going to be Netrunner. Is it I bad mean, that I'd rather have a Zuckerberg overlord? <laughs> Why him? I don't know. He's already I, I like watching. I like watching him make fun of senators for being old. <laughs> 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 I, I enjoy that. Uh, Senator, we run ads. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you don't want your CEO to look like like uh, the Rock's young, older brother? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if I get a choice, I mean. Jeff Bezos, the rags to get wrecked story. <laughs> Seriously, that guy's jacked. It's scary. Yeah, well. I don't spend that much time looking at dudes. Yeah, I spend I an adequate amount of time silent looking about at dudes. <laughs> yeah. He's on a different party. An party adequate amount of time. You know? Mm-hmm. Not too much, not too little. Just an adequate amount. Oh yeah, Ask Jeeves. I remember that. Oh God, yeah. Um, that out of the way. <laughs> what else you got for us, Adam? Huh? What else you got for us? I'm gonna have to censor uh, you. A bit, a bit, a bit of news. No, it's not really news. Old yeah. news at this point. Kong tides in 40k. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Com C's, sorry. Yeah. Com Yeah. Yeah, most we had to report is Mrs. Calm Johnson got her cat again. <laughs> Calm, <laughs> Calm C's the last uh, 24 hours. Not yeah. even 24 from podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I knocked a model over this morning. It's, it was pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, there's an issue at uh, the ATC this weekend. Which we're not going to get into. Which we won't. We're not going to get into now. That's because, all-terrain um, ceramite? Is that what that stands for? <sighs> Sure. Why? We said we weren't going to get into it, Tom. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you just know how I love my STC pattern armor constructs. Oh, my God. I almost thought heard you say STD pattern. 
Same thing. Same thing. It's actually transmission. So, um... No, never mind. I can go this way. <laughs> <laughs> We're adults. We, we are, are adults. adults. Oh, this is debatable. We stop ourselves we midway through we childish claim, according, according to the government. <laughs> according... We are legally we are obligated to tell you we are adults. And most of us procreated, which is even scarier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, we're not really going to go into the to what happened or any of the fallout because you, there's a lot of that information out already. So if you if you if you haven't heard already, if you don't know about it, you can you can go you can go to the various outlets, uh, mainly Facebook and various podcasts that have talked about it and are still talking about it. Um, what I will mention is is that and what's been kind of what a lot of people are mentioning is the need for a, I guess, a set of standards for tournaments. Mm-hmm. Guidelines how to deal, for judges. And how to deal with conduct. certain situations. So just, just so you guys know, um, we've actually been working on something for a while now, every, at least since LVO on and off but it really got uh, pushed to the forefront recently um, along with the other judges for LVO um, so just know that something is being worked on and that um, well, what can it, you tell us then? Uh, what can I tell you that something's being worked on <sighs> um, and that it, it involves player conduct and uh What's more or less called uh, floor floor rules for the yeah. for the judges? Um, you drawing on your vast uh, amount of soccer coaching. Actually, there is a lot. Um, <laughs> because because okay, the reason there's the reason it makes the most sense. Well, and part of the reason yeah. is just the nature of the game. Yeah. As opposed to War Machine, or X Wing, or Magic, or anything made by Americans. Nice. Yep. Where it's cut and dry. Yes. <laughs> this is made by Europeans. <laughs> They're way ahead. <laughs> and so, and yeah, so, so apparently. that that from my experience, and <laughs> especially from uh, <laughs> from uh, from uh, soccer, and from recently watching the World Cup, oh. um, there's 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 more of a, <clears throat> it's not all cut and dry. There's a lot of there's a lot of gray mm. in 40k. For sure. As opposed to War Machine, Magic. Despite what most of the internet wants to admit, there is a lot of gray area. Star Wars. Um, and there's a there's a lot of intent. Yep. You know, uh, mm-hmm. there's a constant, you know, raw versus intent co- uh, argument. There's also a lot of gentlemanly agreement. There, and just like soccer, there's a, there's gentlemen's agreements. I mean, I could go in depth in how you're supposed to act when certain things happen at a certain time, which actually happened during the finals of the World Cup. When the uh, two people decided to run onto the field, yeah, in the middle of the match, who I'm pretty sure are dead by now. Oh, oh we. Um, Soccer I mean, fans is, are crazy. Well, not only that, they're in Russia. <laughs> yes. So, mm. or they'll never be seen again at the very least. Depends on if they were Russian. Or not. Yeah, I don't think true. they were. Yeah, one of them I had think, a funny cap on. I think they were Croatian. <laughs> Russians don't wear funny caps. Well, not since the Cossacks. That was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gone out of style, John. Yes. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think fascists they, they, don't wear hats. Yeah, it, it was out of style two governments ago. <laughs> I think I think they were Croatian. That means they're definitely not going to be seen again in Russia. Yeah. So, so there's it's a lot. It has a lot to do with 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 the with the gentleman's side of the game and things like that, which have a lot to do with soccer. So, me having ref coached, done all that in soccer. Um, it actually helps a lot in trying to develop these. And and yeah, who would have thought coaching soccer actually would help me with judging 40K? But it does. I realized a long time ago, about uh, 10 years ago, once I took the first referee class, it, it kind of clicked Yeah. when they mentioned spirit of the game in the soccer rule, in the rules. Because yeah. hmm. that's what GW says, I used to say, or they still say kind of all the time. The yeah. Spirit of the game. Yep. So spirit of the game. So I, they clicked and that's where they got it from and it helped me understand why they do things the way they do. Mm-hmm. So, so keep a look out. Look, keep a lookout for those to be out. Um, mm-hmm. They won't be out fair. They won't be out before BAO, mm-hmm. but probably sometime between BAO and SoCal Open, maybe. Yeah, cool. probably definitely before LVO. I'm I mean, there's I'm definitely a lot of pretty work that, confident. It's a lot of work that goes into it. It's not something that's going to be easy. Yeah, right? it has to be vetted. It has to be talked about. It's got to be reviewed and tried out. Yeah, there's a bunch yeah. of committees and subcommittees. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. 
Like the U.S. Basically government, chat. but except things will actually happen. <laughs> so chat groups and sub-chat groups? Yes. yes. Facebook Messenger 1 and Facebook Ch- Messenger chat, one <laughs> chat groups within chat groups. So, um... Zuckerberg with the minutes. And speaking of the SoCal Open... So as we segue into SoCal Open, Jeff, um... Jeff, why don't you talk about what it is, since it is your idea. Yes. Well, okay. So... Tom is is the best 40k player in the world, but not really. Oh, so in his own mind. Wow, I believe things so easily. He is. <laughs> th- this has all been done before, as, done, as as Val Heffelfinger will tell you. Mm-hmm. This is uh, this is something that's been done before. But Tom wants to uh, perform well at the SoCal Open. It's a, it's a major tournament that happens here in Southern California in San Diego. Mm-hmm. This will be the second year. Second year, yeah, uh, and it's a. Good size tournament. I think there's 200 people or something like that. Last, last year there year. was about uh, 125 to 150 at least. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's a good size major. Actually, decent on... selling for Sigmar too. For anyone who cares. Yeah, and I think they were. Well, it's just when Shades Bar came out actually. But I don't know mm-hmm. if they're doing a Shades Bar thing this year, but um, the idea is for this. Uh, mi- we're calling it a mini series. We're calling it the SoCal Expansion because Tom is a dedicated uh, for the greater good guy. So we're theming it. Tau, baby. Okay, uh, show's but, over. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> I already tuned out. John, uh, only people who actually show themselves on screen more than their knuckles are allowed to vote. Wow. No. I, 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 <laughs> tuned, right, out, I tuned out once you started talking about Tom. <laughs> good, good move. <laughs> Isn't that when you tune in the most because now you can you can look for opportunities to snipe me? Oh, that's 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 a passive skill. Yeah. Oh damn. He's he's been just, married just, a lot. He's been married a lot longer than you. That's yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's it, 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 if you have a wife for more than like a year and a half, you'll be, like, yes. you'll be like you'll be doing something else. What? Oh, insult. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or agreement. Or stay agree. married. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. But Are we ending this yet? No. The the goal of this this journey is for me and Tom to kind of um, kind of catalog what's happening and how we're training Tom to um, kind of achieve his goal of being uh, getting the best in faction award mm-hmm. at the SoCal Open. You know, Tao, not the hardest faction to get top in. You know, there's only like three players probably. So yeah. well, four, but, four if you count Paul McKelvey, but but only if you count him. You know. Um, Listen, I got best renegades in 2016 LVO because I was you? the only one there. there yes. <laughs> that's like my 2016 BAO experience. Yeah. So minimum Default. champion, <laughs> and that's and the, and that's why I made Alan stay that yeah. extra night because <laughs> I want to get my award yeah. after. <laughs> hey man, if you're gonna win, you're gonna win, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta do it. Um, but the kind of the goal of this mini series is to kind of. You know, this first episode is is kind of intended to kind of just lay the groundwork and the road roadmap for where we're going to be going. But the idea is to provide demonstrative video content over four other episodes, wherein Tom will uh, demonstrate. Well, it's going to be like a battle board and skills, skill challenges, or like you know, um, playbook challenges and stuff like that, where games, war games, where we're going to do. Not just a whole battle report, but will be smaller kind of um, skill-based uh, demonstrations of like tests for him. Yeah, like skill building. Skill building and yeah. and drills. And, and that was one of the. Th- I mean, like that was one of the things that drew me into it when when Jeff approached me was I like this idea of like, hey, yeah, you can treat this like you know everyone makes the joke is is forty k like pro ready yet is it is it is it esports ready you know that that old the old joke that John sometimes makes. And you know it's not you can't you can't compare it to certain things like that. But what you can do is you can still approach it that way. You can train for it in a manner of something professional. You can do drills. You yeah. can you can give yourself actual scenarios. Well, the 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 thing that I picked up on is, forty k has a lot of there's a lot of skills that you can train at to be good at forty k. Yeah. One of them is you know like being cognizant of what other armies do. So that you're cognizant of what your arm, your opponent's army can do on the tabletop. You're not just flying blind. And when he pulls some strategy, I'm like, oh shit, knights can advance and charge. Fuck, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, so you're kind of being able to know what the big baddies do in the meta. And mm-hmm. you know, the reality is that the idea, you know, uh, most tournament players are going to be in the mid level. They're going to be three and three <clears throat> uh, yeah. at a six round tournament. You know, and that's that's how averages work. 
You know, uh, only a certain amount of people are going to be five and one. And it's just, it's not those people who, you know, that's not the kind of uh, audience that we're trying to reach with this content. We're trying to reach the guys who are three and three and want to move it up to four and two. Or yeah. the guys who are two and four and want to move it up to three and three. So we're trying to um, demonstrate a useful uh, uh, practice routine that you can go through yourself to kind of uh, train for either your first 40k tournament or to improve at a, a yeah. existing 40k tournament that you want to go to. And and just because I'm playing, you know, Tau doesn't mean that you can't use this for whatever faction you play. I mean, so another faction I play, which I'm kind of taking a break from right now, is Dark Angels. And I have a feeling that when I'm done with this, I'm probably going to be a lot better at using Dark Angels because I can take whatever lessons I've learned from list construction, from knowing other opponents, knowing what I can do and extrapolate it. So like even if you're an Imperial Guard player, Chaos player, Black Legion player, um, you know, anybody else? No. No. <laughs> anybody else that sucks? The point being, it's it's not specific to the faction. We're trying, you know, sure it'll it'll involve like, well, how do I use my rules with my faction to do better? But it gets you thinking, how do I extrapolate that and then apply it to my army? You know? Like you don't have to be a Tau player to know every other codex. You just have to be dedicated enough to, to do that. Like one example of it. Well, and, that, and that gives me an idea. Maybe we'll do some of the skill challenges. I'll just give you some Space Marines or some Cultists or something yeah. and say this is your army. Because a lot of the, the skill-based challenges that I have planned for Tom are something like here it is, the bottom of turn three. This is what you have on the battlefield. Your objective is to kill more. Your opponents kill two units. They currently hold three objectives. Your objective is to hold more and kill more than them. Go. Yeah. Can you do it? Oh, so not you? like push ups and sit ups? Well, I'm going to make them do push ups. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's going to be the video montage where I have tigers pull ups because nobody does pull ups oh, anymore. Yeah. 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 And I'll be like really slow <laughs> and then like I'll be really the slow and then oh, eventually I'll just be doing it really like really quick. You know? You're going to do the 80s montage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, totally. 80s so, Tom, why don't you, you know, uh, kind of run us through what your goals for this whole series is? What, what you think that you want to get out of it? what your strengths as a player are, and what you're uh, looking to improve on as a player. So for me, what I really want to get out of it is this. Every time I go to a tournament or every time I play a game, I find that I am not farsight, I am hindsight. Which uh, is a joke. Haha, uh, <laughs> I get it, Tao stuff. Funny. <laughs> you're the one who said we should theme it. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't mean in a lame way. A fair, oh, wow. Do. All right, well, I'm going to need another drink after I cry. But anyway, <laughs> the idea being that I can't tell you how many times I've played a game, and the second I'm done deploying, I look at the board and I'm like, damn it, I already lost. Or, there, yeah. You, you're, you, yes. Y yeah, yes. because we had, we, we played a game. Yeah, no, I, uh, and he, he, after the game was over, I basically only won because my knight exploded and took out two thirds of his army no. in the explosion, <laughs> which included three, uh, two, it was two five men. Did you use the stratagem to get it to explode? Yeah, oh, I used, the, totally I used the one where I explode on four. Yeah. yeah. And then I rolled a nine and it killed two squads, wiped out two squads, damaged three, and then killed five characters? Yeah, you got Headhunter in one minute. I got all four points for Headhunter in that yeah. one explosion. Good. And then almost almost got one of the I almost got six or whatever, but I yeah. yeah. It was it was it gutted basically everything in it. Was it team. because you were able to get in there, charge into him with full tilt the first turn and then you were so close you I wasn't even able to do that. No. I, I got into him without full tilt because I went I won the roll to go first, but I he seized on me. Which for me I could have really used to my advantage had I deployed correctly. Tom, yes. you went first and lost. Yeah. Yes. I like proving you wrong, so I was actually <laughs> happy about that. <laughs> but in all reality, like what I was saying earlier is that's true. It's I, I play a game and either it's I at the I end up the deployment phase and I'm like I did this this and this and this wrong, and then you know, or like at the end of the game I think back on it and I'm like man if I'd done this instead I might have actually stood a chance or won it, you know. But then th this is the most frustrating thing. I I genuinely truly remember you know think those things and I can logically prove them in that moment. And then I go to the next game, and it's like I don't remember any of it. Yeah, because he went to when he went to the RTT this past Saturday. He did the same uh, thing. He did the same thing apparently mm -hmm. against another night player. We see he won the game, but that was accidental. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason is because. <laughs> see what I'm trying to work. I like yeah, exactly. Honestly. I <laughs> no, like his honesty gonna, though. This is gonna be a real my fair lady scenario here. I mean, like, I mean, I'm no Audrey Hepburn yet, but the, I mean, like in that oh, in that up. game. 
I had the presence of mind to back the hell away from the guy exploding. Oh, that's right, because you came but, closer to me. Yeah, but he still it managed to explode, and he got, instead of, you know, it, he got really good rolls, which can happen, and you yeah. have to plan for that. So I still lost a chunk of my army, and I was still able to pull it around because he put he moved his armager out of position, and we were tied. He was a new player using a very good list, so he wasn't gunning for points every turn. Okay. And I was, but I was doing it badly, and just managed to kill an armager to break the tie and win the game. <laughs> and so I took advantage, and that's, and to answer your second question, that's one thing I think that I am good at. I'm good at capitalizing on people's mistakes. It's because you play Danny Kwan all the time. That is exactly right. And I think I said I said as much like the other night or something. Yeah, I think you said on Tuesday night. Before. Yeah, because yeah. I used to play against a friend of ours. He's a really good Blood Angels player, and especially now that Eighth Edition's out. And well, now that the Blood Angel Codex is out. Yes, exactly. I mean, to his credit, he stuck with Blood Angels. Yeah, you know, yeah. He's always played it. So he's always played it, and he would kick me in the teeth like, like turn one, no matter what game or what edition we were playing. First turn, second turn, and. When he knew he was winning, that's when he would start offering me advice to try and come back. <laughs> and that's when he knew you, he was winning? Yes. No, but, and here's the thing. Because, I mean, but he made it a pattern of this. Okay, he's like, now that I'm winning, like, you need to think of this, this, and this. And so I learned to play from a back foot. Hmm. And so that's, like, a very helpful skill. And that's something that people don't think about. It's like, they think, oh, my God, I lost my Yavara. Or, oh, my God, I lost my Castellan Knight. Oh, man, I'm just going to, like, wallow in self-pity and not think about... No, you can still... You have to think about it logically, and can you still pull out the win? So you're saying you fuck up early on purpose so you can go from <laughs> behind? Is that what it sounds like? So you're used to that now? I guess. Purpose Maybe this is, is why he was one. better with... <laughs> the purpose is a very strong That's why he was better with index tile than godex tile. <laughs> Well, I was no. I, mean, yeah, I was yeah. better. I was better with index tile when everything else was still index yeah, underscore. No, yeah, you did quite well at BAO last year. I did. I went four and two, and that was and that was with most of everything not having a codex. Except than me, Space I, I Marines? went. I went two and four. <laughs> what? What's that? I went two and four. <laughs> I think it went better than I did. I think I went five hundred. Nice. Yeah, I like that. So, Remember. but but for but as I've said, like you know, deployment's a problem for me. Uh, I think that I'm, I'm, I could definitely stand to learn more in the movement phase. I've gotten much better at target priority, but occasionally I fall prey to temptations of splitting my fire when I shouldn't. Yeah. You, you're, 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 you're like shaking your uh -huh. head, you know, you know. Well, and, Jeff but, stopped you from doing that on Tuesday. Yes, he did. Yeah. And and the, the interesting thing was, the scenario was this, like, and this is something we'll talk about, right? You know, I there was a Castellan Knight that had one wound left, and I had a commander and something else or no, it was just, just a commander. commander. Just a commander with 12 shots. And there's another thing over there that's got like five or six wounds. Technically speaking, I could easily just, you know, well, not technically, just what I thought in my head was I could dedicate half of his guns to one the, the one wound target and the other half to the other, thinking it'd be enough. And Jeff said, no, it doesn't, you, you need to guarantee the kill because that's the most important thing. Don't try and get greedy and go for two. Well, just assume you're going to have bad dice. I mean, that's yes. This is not a new concept in the 40k competitive uh, Facebook realm no. as of yet. I mean, there's blog posts about this all the time. Assume you're going to roll poorly. You got to plan mm -hmm. for bad luck. So yeah, you might kill the Castellan with two of the guns instead of four of the guns, and you can then put another few wounds on this other knight. Right. But. The, the inverse of that is, is if you don't kill the Castellan, you're fucked. Yep. You, uh, yeah, then I would have so, automatically lost. Yeah, I mean, so you, you, you dedicate more firepower than is necessary to killing the target and right. secure that, that kill. Yeah, and so, and, 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 the, but, and the end of the story is I ended up rolling ridiculously well. Like, I put, like, 12 wounds on this Castellan. It was a ton. But the point wasn't that I didn't then look at Jeff and say, see, I could have split my fire and been okay. Why did you give me I terrible will. advice? Because then I'm looking at the result after the fact. The idea is that there I got lucky. Sweet. That meant I had more chances to guarantee what I needed to do, not what I wanted to do. And that, and so there's a difference in that. There's right, and Jeff was right. If you hadn't killed the Castellan, you lose the game. Yes, and that, that's absolutely right. Instead, the dice didn't go your way, and you split fire, and the Castellan lived. That was game over. Oh yeah, it was. And and instead, because I did that, uh, and this was actually against John, we tied. Yeah. yeah. So. And it was the end of the. It was their last model to shoot in the shooting phase. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's not like I had anything else. Yeah, if you had other things, you might shoot those first. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, these are the kind of demo These are the kind of skills that I've picked up on that you can that you can work toward improving you know and so our idea here with this mini series is to provide 
you know, kind of a, a catalog of Tom's journey to the SoCal Open, but something that you, the viewers, or listeners, however you take it, can um, incorporate into your own practice regime, whether you play yeah. casually, semi-casually, or competitively, whatever you want to do, understanding things like uh, charging with fire warriors to advance them up the board for a to cap an objective is important. I mean, like if you're just if you're playing a, a gunline army, you don't think about that, but it's an important skill to have because you might need to employ it at some point. So you need to be cognizant of what's what the tabletop is offering, what your opponent's army can do, what your army can do, and it, it sounds like a lot of work, but I mean, you it's you're you will be better at 40k if you dedicate a little bit of time to reading everyone's codexes and theory crafting up a list in that army because you'll start to see how the army synergizes with itself and it mm. it takes time and it takes a little bit of de dedication but if you want to be good at something in any in any, any aspect of your life you have to dedicate time and, and practice to improve of course yeah absolutely. yeah having um, I've been writing that series on the weekly wrap up for the ITC for frontline gaming for I don't know a couple months now right and I've recently started to do interviews with this the like the top players in the different factions and the top players overall and the, of when I started to do the top 10 right and I started to do these interviews and ask these questions of these guys when I get to the how do you prepare for an event um, question it's like universal amongst all of them the different things that they do to prepare are almost all centered around the same idea of not just like practice but <coughs> practice re-rack and switch armies and practice we rack the game, go second. Like, we just played this game, I went first, now we're going to play this game, and I'm going to go second. Put the models back exactly where they were deployed before. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's not even just repetition. Like, they might only play four turns, or they might only play two turns, two turns and be like, yeah. okay, well, this is what's going to happen, so let's re rack and do the other way. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of that, War Machine players do that a lot. Yeah. But, like, just the idea of, like, having this regimen that you're talking about that you go through, and, like, these different, like... Um, Did you just acknowledge the existence of the game? I, d I did, unfortunately, <laughs> recognize the existence of War Machine. This is unfortunate. Wait, wait, you, but you met Mark too, right? I met, I met Mark one. Oh. Do you know that there's other marks? <laughs> yes, because I played Mark one. <laughs> I did play Mark one. Car I played Kador and Karachev, so I could do Iron Curtain and knock people down and then kill. Them. That was my one trick pony, and I liked it. And it was a fun one trick pony. <laughs> I tried every mark. You dug that hole for yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't dig that hole. But anyways, like I was saying, like all these, all the best players have these regimens that they go through, and then they all utilize their teams in the same way too. Yeah. One, yeah. they all have teams, and two, they all utilize their teams not just to bounce ideas off of, but to like pick apart their lists and then play against Correct. every one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos in our group is very active about that. Yeah. Like the the. The idea here is we're going to provide a roadmap to preparing for a tournament, whether it's your local RTT that you're attending for the first time and you're like, look, I want to do well at a tournament. I'm kind of iffy about going because I've heard some things about how tournaments are run, the, the win all cost <laughs> players, or whatever it is. Yeah, John. You know, yeah, that's like totally John. me. And then you, you need you, uh, <laughs> yeah. or you're or you're trying to improve for a, a large event like you know Nova or uh, SoCal Open LVO next year, whatever it is. We're trying to lay out a kind of a roadmap for you. So I think, you know, in this one, you know, this is not something that's new advice to anyone out there. If you've been following, you know, uh, the Brown Magic or any of uh, the other kind of competitively minded podcasts out mm -hmm. there, they'll kind of all give you the same general advice. But our idea is to provide specific demonstrative video content of of the practice element of that of that practice for the event. Yeah, it's kind of like those. I don't know if anyone ever played chess or was in a chess club in high school. I was in a chess club for one quarter. I only won no, one I, game and then I quit and then called them nerds as I left. But I didn't, didn't do that part. You throw your leather, I did, I did you throw your your leather jacket back over your shoulder and go, nerds, but with a tear in your eye because you know you'll miss it more than anything else in this earth. <laughs> yes. Okay. I just wanted very, to check. I wasn't very good at it. Yeah, no, I just wanted to re make sure that the vivid construct I had of my mind of how that happened was true. But, um,. No, but it's like a chess book. It's like chess, if you buy any chess book, they will always have exercises in the back. But the difference between what we're, what we're doing in a chess book is you don't have to buy the chess book. You can just watch it. <laughs> you, know? you can also subscribe to the Twitch stream. You can okay. also do that. <laughs> or the Patreon. All or it's Patreon. cost you is your time. Yeah. 
which is time that you would spend caring about this anyway. But now, hopefully, we're helping you with that time that you're spending. So this will be because I didn't look at the show notes because I don't read mm-hmm. uh, because I can't. Um, but uh, <laughs> it works. It works for the government people. <laughs> Yikes. I technically don't work for the government. Oh, right. Sorry. No. Union worker. Yes. Non-government. Non-government. Not like anybody in Congress reads. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone... Never mind. Not going there. So, it's going to be on Twitch mostly, or... On no. Twitch? Okay, so the... Well, we'll kind of let me go over the kind of general the format. The, the, I guess. Yeah, the format. Yeah. The format is there, there's going to be this one Twitch cast only because uh, we may. I guess we may. T- there's going to be two drill episodes which are going to be focused on like it's going to be a lot. That's only going to come up on uh, YouTube because it's going to be cutscenes. Mm. Okay. It's going to be that's, here's the yeah. exercise. We'll explain the exercise to the audience, and here's Tom um, going through the exercise. And there'll be probably six or so exercises that he's going to do in the first video content, and then he's going to repeat those exercises. Not verbatim but it's the same type of exercises at the end of the series Mm -hmm. to kind of show his growth as a player so he'll go through the same similar exercise to see if he's improved do you guys have a contingency plan if he doesn't improve yeah we'll doctor the whole thing okay got it we'll do like gw and play a bunch of games until we get the outcome we want Yes. Perfect. Just and making sure we've covered our bases. Yeah. Okay, I'm just... I mean, I mean that's that, why I bring that, it on YouTube only. <laughs> <laughs> no Twitch live streams for this no. But we may, we may live stream the two middle episodes are going to be battle reports. Yes. Okay. And, um, you know, for because this is TFG Radio, the hope is that they'll be against John and Adam. Yeah. Um, two. Schedules permitting. Did you say no? <laughs> I said cool. I thought I heard you say no. No. Yeah. I, th- I heard no. It's either coo cool or nope. It was cool. I heard nope. <laughs> I did not say no. So I like it. You attention. guys can expect to see oh, the no, first good. video content practice drills in sometime in August, probably in the later part of August, because in the early part of August, we'll be training for Hammer Wrath, which is our local GT mm-hmm. here. Um, and then we'll do, we may do the drills before that, and then, you know, and then release edit, them after. Doing or... editing, we might have to do some, you know, video editing to get them out yeah. afterwards. Um, and then you'll expect to see the battle reports in September, and then the last, um, the last, uh, you know, essentially redo of the drills yeah. in uh, October leading up to the SoCal Open, which is at the end of October. Um, so because this is a Tau, he plays Tau, we're, we are calling these spheres. Yeah. Uh, so tonight's episode is the uh, the spheres first sphere. or expansions. Well, What's the difference. The, the they expand in spheres, right? The the yeah. taus. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Each expansion expansion is called a sphere. Oh, okay. But if you want to if you want to be good and proper, you have to say it, uh, tau sp- uh, sphere of expansion. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So because it's called a SoCal. Uh, SoCal expansion. Expansion. It doesn't make sense to call them all spheres of expansion. Okay. Have we thought expansion. all the way through all the ramifications of this thing? <laughs> <laughs> because like what if you train Tom really well and then he like wins the SoCal Open that means he wins best in fact but then I can't talk so much shit to Tom all the time because he's better than me but here's that's the not going to stop you already <laughs> perform better there's than plenty you. of people this better true, than me that I talk shit about so this yeah you, you have to remember maybe I'll still just do it anyways I don't care remember yeah, I don't you're, I don't you're know not attacking a you, you're not attacking me because of my skill as a player you're attacking me because of who I am yeah and no, that's not going to change because of his jealousy Oh, like Probably. I don't want to have to result to ad hominem attacks. It makes me feel bad. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the one thing I will say, though, is that talking about this series, uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched it. It was like a while. Maybe it was like eight years ago. It was that uh, that documentary about the spelling bee. And yeah. of all, yeah, they actually that. ended up interviewing the kid who won the freaking thing. And this was like months and months and months. They're like, it's like they're doing it live. Like they're, you know, it wasn't live to us. You know, they did the yeah. editing and everything. But they actually ended up picking one of the kids who right. won the whole thing. It was, mm-hmm. And it was incredible. So it's kind of like this, except it's just one of me. <laughs> so, you know. So our I mean, odds aren't good. Guys. No, they're not great. But, yeah. you know, but so I'm fairly confident you're not going to have that issue, John. But I don't think there's an issue. Okay, well, somebody that. from our team has to win Hammer of Wrath because somebody from our team won it last year and it's our store. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a different subject. Yeah. So, hashtag rec players out there watching. Somebody, because it's not going to be me, watching. has to win. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Jeff, you got to log in on your phone and comment. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, went down um, I guess Jeff's got his cover. So, right? I, think, I think at this point, you know, the first sphere, the first episode of this episode is called, you know, Unity and Purpose, The Art of War. Is the that right? Art of War, as in the tapestry we are painting for you of how things will occur. Yeah, it's pretty stupid, but yeah. there we are. When, when we're um, this is what we like. Shut so, up. So, Tom, why don't you kind of... I just like to be on record that I'm against all of this regarding Tau. Yeah, now get on the record. Uh, hey, so next Tom, year it can be about Black Legion. 
I don't care as long as it's not tap. <laughs> no amount of training is going to make Adam good. No, I said, no, I'll play Black No, he said he'll play oh. Black <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Tom, why don't you kind of walk us through the list that you think you're going to start the the um, project with? I know it's it's been heavily bashed into you by me yes. to start with this list. But, but, yeah. it's, but at, the, at the end of the day, too, it's not just something. Around. It's not just a list that I am taking from you at face value and saying, yes, I will play this list. I've had enough opportunity to realize this is actually something I want to play. Uh, and the, the core list concept is that I will be running primarily Tau Sept because of two reasons. First, uh, overwatching on fives and sixes is so damn good. Yeah. It is so damn good. And Tau players, you know, lament that they only get one phase, the shooting phase. While I think in our discussions we agree they actually have the movement phase too and don't realize that. If you want to count Overwatch as a phase in itself, they own that phase. And I don't think enough Tau <coughs> players utilize that. Yeah, that's their assault. That's their version of assault. Yeah, exactly. They okay, but to be fair, this because yeah. Tau players just want to complain. I will not comment on that sure. because I am one, and and you like to be in good standing online with them. Yes. Whereas I don't care. Yeah. Where I, where I joined Reddit just to go into that thread where they were talking trash <laughs> about me to prove them wrong. <laughs> well, you you're just like to do to prove people wrong. I can find you other pots if you need to keep stirring. Like no, I just good. just need to just let me know. Oh, trust me, John knows where to go to stir pots. I've got lots of pots. Yeah, to stir. he has lots of pots. To stir. I'm gonna walk into Bed He's Bath like the and Beyond. Balancing plates guy. I'm gonna walk into Bed Bath and Beyond with my wife. We're looking to like get something new, and I'm gonna see John in the pot section just like, stirring something. <laughs> and we're like, John, that's a literal pot, pot that spoon. you're stirring, and you're like, I need the real thing. <laughs> I can see myself doing that. So that's that's one. Uh, that's you when you're 80. Yes. Another thing that I'll be doing is I'll be running a number of fire warriors, a, a lot of them. Sixty. Uh, what Close. Are we playing? How many did you? What is, uh, oh, what's, oh. Eight, what's what's eight times six? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Yeah, so forty-eight to sixty at minimum. Forty-eight. 48. Yeah. Not fifty-four. Nine in each. If I can, I mean, it depends on balance because the great thing about running majority fire warriors is you can bring them up to nine. Yeah. But if you drop them to eight, they're still pretty damn effective, and all of a sudden that's. Yeah, the Seven. squads you were running yeah. of eight on Tuesday were pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. what he ran when I played yeah. him. But he only ran five squads? He ran four against me. I ran... F- no, I ran... Four, then it was four. Yeah. No, one, two. You had four, and then you had those guys with the shotguns. Yeah, the, the breachers. Oh, the breachers, yes, that's right. I was running breachers just because I, I wanted... Didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really like those guys. No, I wasn't running them t- to run them. I was running them as to get battalion points and also to, to cover my anchor points of the corners against deep strikers. Which against knights is a hilarious thing to have in your back pocket. You can't deep strike against me. Well, yeah, I'm a knight spider. I don't care. Um, but so the list you're gonna run is is not, six squads. Yeah, and it won't include breachers. It'll be purely strikers. Uh, it'll have cadres in there because uh, over uh, what is it? Volley fire, which also works in Overwatch. Which I will fully admit with all humility, I did not realize until today, yesterday. <laughs> Because when I told you, because in, because I, from what I understand, if and again I could also be totally wrong about this and be an idiot, but in seventh edition, you heard it. In seventh edition, see that's the same thing. I'm humble, so that, of course I don't mind being the guinea pig for this. Uh, in seventh edition, Cadre <laughs> Fireblaze. <laughs> god damn it, <laughs> Kevin! God damn it! Uh, in seventh edition, Volley Fire is the same in the shooting phase, where if they're within your rapid fire range and your fire warriors are within. Per model, six inches of a cadre, you get an extra shot. Oh yeah, you did that with me. Yeah, not remember then, but not in Overwatch. Oh yeah, I don't remember. That was seventh edition. In eighth edition, they well, say. Well, you can do that in Overwatch. I can't do it. No, in Overwatch, I was only shooting two rounds per rifle. All I saw was right. a bunch of dice, so I don't know. But if you have a cadre, that's three rounds per rifle in Overwatch. Right. With Tau set hitting on fives. That's yeah. fantastic. It's and that's good. also regardless of modifier, too. Yeah. So any minuses to hit, like, let's say a, a Venom's charging me, which has a natural minus one to hit. Well, not yeah. In my, not so in my Overwatch. Well, you don't count, you don't count modifiers that's that's in Overwatch. Overwatch. Right, no, but I'm, I'm just spelling it out. You know? You're just reminding me how much I hate Tau. <laughs> I'm just reminding uh, Okay, so you have a, a block of fire warriors with some character support to buff up their shooting. Yes. Um, the idea here... For me, as a teaching point, is is Tom. One of his weaknesses, in my opinion, is is the movement phase and board presence. Sure. And so, sixty fire warriors gives you a lot of dudes who can get shot and they can die, and you can still push out and hold objectives and be aggressive with them 
Um, and you have to play aggressively with them because they're optimally used at 15 inch range, mm -hmm. which means you're going to get charged. But as Tau Sept, with supporting fire, you're going to be able to do significant damage, if not kill most charging units. I mean, a 40 man cultist blob is probably still going to charge you, and, and but you might kill 20 or 30 of them on Overwatch. I yeah. mean, it's. <laughs> It's not, pretty significant. Not to mention which, the marker lights are hitting them on fives, which yeah. means now my overwatches are hitting you on fives and sixes and re-rolling ones. That I mean, that, right. that just ups your odds. Getting to re-roll anything is good, period. Yeah, exactly. It's fantastic. So then what's what's the other components in your list? Uh, another component, or the other components in my list are special characters, uh, specifically two. Or Well, I'll have an ethereal in there uh, because that sense of stone buff or uh, Calm of Tines or Zephyr's Grace if I'm going to do Mon Ka to advance my Fire Warriors out. You know, the Ethereal is just a great buff to have with a block of Fire Warriors. I mean, 45 points or 50 points is cheap. So. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's totally worth it. And they use his leadership and uh, as Tau Sept, it's nine. So already you're, you're negating a lot of losses you'll have with your infantry. It came in handy in our game. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Um, another character is Dark Strider who, let's say... Adam is playing me and he gets that cultist blob out. You know, and he charges me and he ties up all my fire warriors and I'm like, oh my god, this sucks. Well, Dark Strider allows your infantry to retreat and fire as if they had fly. So now instead of my battle suits just having fly, now it's my whole infantry. And that's really good. Well, assuming they don't take a prisoner, but yeah. That's true. That's true. If they, I mean, but that's part of... They can try of, point, point one of your models and you're screwed, but... Yeah. Um, That's something that we'll be working on in the drills. Yes, because I can prevent that based on how I move in position. Correct. Yeah. Um, of casualties. And then this is something I've never run before, even trying and even for fun. I'm also going to have Shadow Sun in my list. Yeah, I think Shadow Sun's a good addition. Is that the one with the sword? No, no that's Farsight. That's Farsight. Yeah. Shadow, Shadow Sun's the girl. Shadow Sun's the girl, and the reason... The She's reason, the one who killed the chapter master. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the old Raven Guard chapter master. No one remembers his name. No one remembers his name. John Salas probably remembers his name. No. No? He doesn't care that much? No, because he's got the new guy. Shrike. Oh. Shrike, yeah, that's true. Um, I think only Forge World cares. But what's great about her... Because <laughs> they make that model. That's, what it, that's how you know his name. <laughs> what's great about her is that she's she's relatively cheap for a special character battle suit. She's got two Meltas that hit on twos, which is awesome. Uh, she's a minus one to hit native, five, five up invul. And she can not only declare Montka or Kamiyan, which is advance and still shoot, or stand still and reroll all misses, turn one. She can then do that uh, Kamiyan move, turn a second, a second time. Which, if you're running an infantry block, you're advancing, you kill the first wave of enemy infantry or light vehicles or whatever. Then the enemy gets closer to you. Now you've got all your infantry there. Boom, Kamiyan. Now everybody's rerolling misses, and it's a really good wombo combo for a infantry list. Yeah, I mean, the idea is you move your big block on turn one into the middle of the board, and you just say, come at me, bro. Mm. And then... Is there a model for her? Then you're in San Diego. Uh, there yes. is, but it's really... But uh, it's not on eBay, so... so looks is like, it fine cast? It yeah. is a fine cast, man. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I mean, I'm also... I might even kit bash it, so yeah. I, I prefer to, actually. Just do it on the internet and just put some boobs just, on it. Yeah, you green stuff boobs on it. That's all I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, so that, that works, right? She's not riding and... <laughs> whoa, 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 wait, what? Why, 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 why? No. Now she's not riding a drone. Yeah, she's, she can't be riding a drone. Only ethereals <laughs> get to ride drones. Only surfboard ethereals. <laughs> surfboard. Okay, so you also have some big suits in your list, right? Yes, I have a Riptide, okay. and I have a Yavara. Okay. The Yavara will be in a separate set, because if you're going to have a Yavara, Borkon's the way to go. I've seen people run it with three Riptides, too. Uh, I know yeah. uh, Val Hethelfinger is taking that to ETC. No, yeah, ETC, yeah, which is a strong list. It's very similar. Wait, is Val on the uh, American team for ETC? He's on Team oh, Canada. He's Canada. He's Canada. Oh, Canada, that's right. Yeah. He's Canadian. That's why, he's, that's why, that's why he was able Canucks. to be on the team. Nuts. <laughs> Shots fired, Val. <laughs> um, but, okay, so the Borkan Yavar is obviously good. Yes. Um, it does add some additional layers of complexity to the army. Um, one of the things that I'm, as your coach, is, is stressing with this list is Keep it simple, stupid. You know, like one of the biggest things I think you can do with a list, and this is for our listeners, is you know, minor tweaks you're gonna make in a list, changing this, changing that, trying to get to the perfect list, it's all pretty irrelevant in my opinion. To me, the <coughs> biggest thing that's gonna improve your player skill is familiarity with the same list. And so my 
admonition to Tom is to not change the list in any significant manner, at least until September. Yeah. Or um, and not, what about changing your list like two days before? Oh, an that's event? all good. Yeah. Is that good. I, I will actually. Is that what we do? I'm, Why would anybody do that? I don't even know. I'm probably. Was it, or was it changing thing? your whole army? Who would do such a thing? John, do you remember that guy? That, what did he do? Did he change I, his whole I, army I, or was I, it just I, the list? I don't have any recollection salty. of these events. Hmm, yeah, I think he was pretty salty after that. Was it, wasn't he Swedish? He was salty Jan. <laughs> <laughs> and they salt salty because he likes the fish. He's a Europe. Too far. Okay. That's why, we don't like, um, that's why we don't let Tom talk so much sometimes. <laughs> well, so, guys, if I don't talk, I'll just get grounded. So in, in, in anyone who's <laughs> tuning in to get some actual competent advice out of this episode, I, I apologize you had to wait this long. But <laughs> the idea that you know, the idea that we're gonna do here is is Thanks. gonna lay out the roadmap for mm-hmm. getting to a tournament and yeah. trying to perform well at it. Yeah. And the first piece of advice that I, I will give you, and this is this is not new information, it's available in a lot of different formats. Um, but what we're again what we're trying to hope here is is to show you the the practice part of it more in, yeah. the, in the later content that's going to come up. But the first thing you need to do is you need to go, okay, where, what, what tournament am I going to? Is it my local RTT or is it SoCal Open, et cetera? And then kind of identify the meta that's going to be present at that event. In your local RTT, it's going to be a lot easier for you to identify that meta because it's going to be dudes you know. Yeah. You know, and you may not have gone to an RTT or you may have gone to an RTT and got smashed and gone zero and three. Uh, and you know the guys who are doing, who are winning, and you know what they're bringing, you know what they're running. There's this Death Guard player who, you know, brings this list, and I can't beat it, you know. So you Five can... Mortarians. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. It's, it's, Thank you, rule of three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, for... There's that other rule that you can't take more than the one character, name character. That's not Wait, rule. does he? Why is he? Look that... Find that rule in the big rule book, you know. You can't. It's, the, it's him. I know. Yeah. That was the idea. I'm trying to lawyer you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's called the, it's the it's nine, called it's the nine it's, uh, demon princes you got to worry about. It's called, a, it's called a joke, John. Yeah, because nine demon princes is so good. It, well, it's a thing. It's not whether it's What about nine malefic lords? Speaking uh, of four. Malefic lords are... <laughs> <laughs> They were like last edition, I think. <laughs> no, I'm now, see, now I'm trolling it you. Seem, it seems like last edition, at least. Yeah. So, look, the idea is you need to identify the meta. And yes. in, in Southern California, in the San Diego region where SoCal Open happens, I mean, look, it draws a lot of players from out of town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. But San Diego has an, uh, and California in general, actually, I think, has a um, large number of Imperial Guard players and Chaos, chaos. players. Yeah. And especially in San Diego, the Chaos players is really, really, mm-hmm. um, you have a lot of the prominent chaos players so you're gonna get guys like heretics down there by Mexico yeah you <laughs> you'll get a lot I don't know like, why you gotta bring Mexico <laughs> into it but uh, damn yeah. John well, I'm, I'm take anyways that the point is is that you have a lot of skilled players in San Diego who mm-hmm. play chaos and play Imperial Guard in the up to Orange County LA County and then up to the Bay Area you're gonna see a lot of those things so these are the kind of things that you're gonna need to look to when you are as a new player identifying your meta I mean it may be uh, you may not have any data on the, the event you're going to. You may just go like, look at something like Nova Open. It's going to be drawing people from around the country, so you can't really base it on a regional meta. You have to kind of just look at all the tournaments in your in the country and kind of try and you know distill some information out of that. So it's a lot harder to plan for a meta at a larger event. The bigger the event, the harder it is to plan for what the meta is going to be. <laughs> but the nice thing about Eighth Edition is you can always kind of take an all comers list and say look you know I know I'm going to be facing a lot of bodies and I know I'm going to be fa- list with a lot of bodies and I know I'm going to be facing lists with a lot of large tough targets aka knights Castellans you know the knight Castellans these kind of thing or chaos you know cultist cancer this kind of shit that Shadow you're seeing and the yeah Shadow Sword and three Bane, ba- Bane Blades is a common thing you'll see at the SoCal Open I know last year at the SoCal Open there was out of any play three of them there are two of them there were only two of them there, and I played both of them. Oh, oh God. So maybe I lost both first, games, by the way. Okay, well, this bias. is a case study on why you should just win games. Yes. Because you don't have to keep playing those lists. <laughs> yes, because those are mid, mid, mid-table. Yeah. No, and, 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 and this is where it gets a, to do a, bit, a little bit of real talk. I mean, like, yeah. the thing is, is if you are in need of, of like, practice and whatnot, you're going to be facing gatekeeper lists the whole tournament. So for but but for people who don't know, what is a gatekeeper list? Right. So a gatekeeper list is a a, a a list that is easy to run, 
for someone who doesn't isn't a, a, a top tier competitive player, it's easy to run, say four knights and some guard. Um, like John likes to run, but it's it's a it's a it's a list that you can expect anyone to net list and do reasonably well with. Mm-hmm. Three Tesseract vaults, three Bane Blade variants, uh, you know, it's, Cultist it's, Cancer. It's, last it's, year it was Gilliman. Hey, what did I run a Barry open again? Salty. You run the second the Legion Primarch. We the, don't know who he is. You're the key master of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Awesome. Um, well done. But anyways, these are the list. If <laughs> nice. you're if you're planning on and going to a tournament, and the reality is that you're going to be in the midfield, like most yes. players are in the midfield. It's also um, it's also a list that um, you have to expect to face, but at won't, some point, yeah. but won't win a tournament. Yeah, correct. So like, look, everyone who's going to win the tournament or be in B five and one, yeah, yeah, be in contention B five one is going to have to play the gatekeeper list. Yeah. But what's the reality is is most of the gatekeeper lists are going to play other people who are in the middle of the pack. Yeah. Because or, they're going to they're going to go, you know, three three wins on day 1 and then on day 2 they're going to get to round 4 and they're going to lose to a uh, one of the players who's in contention to yeah. win and then they're going to drop down to 3 and 1. They might win their next game then lose their last game or lo- win their second game. You yeah. know? So it, they could go 5 and 1 with the They can easily list, go 5 and 1 for yeah. two. Yeah. A list pick. like the one that I'm painting with four knights and uh, Ashton Militarum easily could go 4 and 2. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not going to win the event. Yeah, it has yeah, it has, what, it has hard counters. What it we're seeing hard what hard I'm hard. what I'm what at least what I'm seeing right now when I when I look at the different uh, GT results or listen to the different podcasts about the GTs is you're seeing a lot of knights Night armies like John's or mine go four and one, uh, three and two, uh, four and two. Yeah. Um, and that you know because they may win like like Jeff said the first three they may lose the next one and then win the last one. Yeah. Or they yeah the, so they may get a, a better parent or better record because of where they got that loss. Yeah. If you get your first loss in round one or two, you're usually going to submarine and play a little bit weaker yeah. opponents if you're. First loss is round four out of five. You know, it's it's you're still you've been playing hard, hard time, games, yeah. getting to that position. So yeah. I mean, like, the idea is that look, the re- you need to have real talk with yourself and go, look, I'm going to be playing mid tier armies and mid tier players because I'm can, uh, my my record prior to to trying to practice and be serious about it was two and four. Yeah, and I want to go to four and two or three and three or something. That's where everyone in the pack is. I mean, like, seventy five percent of the of the tournament. Isn't going five and one or one and five. No. They're going three and three or four and two or two and four. Right. And so they're in that they're in that pack, and those are where you have to kind of plan if, if that's where you want to do. And that's where the gatekeeper armies live. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so like the idea is, look, I mean, you have to be realistic. Like if you want to win a big tournament, and you are at the point of your forty k career, where you're like, I'm just getting into it. I'm gonna go and you know. Uh, when 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 the LVO, you know, like it's it's not going to happen. It's oh like, boy. sorry, but you know you're not going to do well. You're going to go maybe four and two at best, which is respectable if yeah. you can do that right after making that commitment decision. Yeah, exactly. So if you're at that point where you went four and two at LVO last year and you had just picked up the game, you're probably a good player and you probably are already know the things are we're going to be demonstrating in the mini series. So which one of the things I like about Tom's list actually, <clears throat> this is the only time I'm going to compliment him tonight. And you that compliment is, me. You don't have to like Tau. There's a difference. <laughs> that's true. Okay. It's, it's the only time I'm going to talk exclusive. good about yeah, Tau. That's the, that's the phrase I'm looking The thing for. I like about his list is the gatekeeper list is don't win tournaments, right? Right. So the list that win tournaments and the players that win tournaments, because it's not the list that wins, it's the player, right? Right. The player that wins the tournament is the one who takes lists and they craft to beat the mid-tier lists. And none of their lists are going to be, th- well, the exception of LVO, because it was the heavy Eldar meta, right? Oh, yeah. Which oh, is yeah. kind of past, but, like, that was the thing. It's usually people who create a somewhat unique list that can handle other ones. And Tau, it, despite what Tau groups say, don't suck. They don't. They not don't suck. at all. <laughs> and, and I think that the problem is not a lot of players, other than, like, people like Anthony Belm, have really figured out a way to win with them. So I like what we're doing with Tom because I think there's a possibility for Tom to do really, really well at the SoCal Open or even win it because he's going to be working at beating all those gatekeeper armies and all the people in the mid-tier, so he's naturally going to be out of the mid-tier yeah. and near the top. And the I'm, idea, I'm just going to stick with naturally do really well. I don't want to make any win claims right now. Sure. <laughs> yeah, his, his uh, the goal, the stated goal is to get best, best in faction. Right. If I don't get best yeah. in faction, I'll personally be happy with 4-2. and two. 
Sure. But, but what I'm shooting for is five best, and one. Best in faction, depending on who shows up and is playing Tau, you might be able to pull off a four and two. But I want you get. I want you to get to five and one. I personally, I mean, I do too. That's the so goal. So we have a. a, a a GT coming up here in August. I, are you attending camera? I will be out of town, okay. unfortunately. Then I want you to go zero and five. I'll be there. All right. You, John will be there. You can go one and five. Then. I'll be there, but I think hey. um, I think I might be helping to run it. Okay. okay. Oh, no, that'd be awesome. Um, of course, the one time I'm not there, Tom, I give you judging grief. Is there, is there any list or army that jumps out of you right away that you're concerned about? Or that you're that you're concerned about with the army you have right now. So, one funny thing before um, playing the games that I have and talking with Jeff as much as I have in the last couple of weeks, one of the things I was afraid of running an infantry list was knights, because okay. I was thinking, oh my god, if I run infantry, I'm not bringing sure. enough heavy ordnance, I'm not bringing enough ball buster, suit commander bullshit, whatever. Long strike. Long strike, you know, <laughs> like or hammerheads, like you know, whatever. Just pick something with a lot of damage and AP. And I'm gonna, I'm, I see knights, I'm gonna lose. Nah, and okay. what's interesting is I actually feel very confident now. I've played four games in the last week and a half, two weeks against knights. <laughs> one against Chad, one against you. you. Don't say. <laughs> yeah, one against you, and then one at the tournament. I'm and gonna say one doesn't count. No. Say who's be the nice. one at the tournament because the guy was new and he could have kicked my ass if he knew what he was doing. I was gonna say Chad, but... Be nice, Adam. Be Adam. Nice. <laughs> He knows. Uh, anyway, um, but for me, actually, now that I look at my list, and this is something I actually, you know, I was going to bring up to Jeff later, but I, I, you know, we can bring up now, are other lists that bring more infantry than I do. Specifically, Guard and Tyranids. Orcs. Or chaos. Chaos, yeah, Chaos Cultists. Well, uh, orcs will have to take into account because there will be a new codex by the time you play something. I will reserve judgment for Orcs um, when they come out, but I am already kind of scared that they're going to be dope and they, they could shift what we're doing. But, like, but that's but that's beauty of the series. I don't it? think Orcs will matter for Hammer. Not for Hammer, but for SoCal. For SoCal. We're talking about SoCal. I'm an Orc player. SoCal, yes. You know, I've been playing Orcs in 2nd Edition and He's a good I problem boy. love Orcs, but I think their codex will be good and it'll... Not they'll put them into the meta, but I don't think they're going to be any more in the meta than. You don't think they're going to be knock your socks off? I don't think I. I just don't see how they're going to do it. Cool. You know. I mean, they're going to be Necron good. Or, yeah. No, they'll be Tyranid good. They'll be like okay, good. They'll have. Good. They can win a GT. They can get go five and one. I don't know if they're going to be. Not like Dark Eldar. Dark good. Eldar. They're good not going to be Dark or, Eldar good. Or but, but also not Grey Knight bad. Yeah, they're, I think they'll be a great codex. Or Grey Knights. I think they'll be like Tyranids. Tyranids is is like the stealth codex. I think Tyranids is super good. There's, mm. but I don't think they'll be as mobile as Tyranids. But I think they'll be. A lot more tricks, like some hat tricks. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we'll see. I mean, especially if you, um, uh, what is it, Chad, our local store runner, has said that Kill Team is kind of, a, in a way, a preview or a teaser of certain things to come. Let's not talk about that game. But we don't have to. Good. I might, okay, I know. I might just, is, but like, it also has stratagems, and one of the strategies. Okay, we don't have to talk about the game, but uh, I'm, is interested, Daka, Daka, I'm Daka. interested to know why Jeff doesn't like it. I don't dislike it. I just don't want to talk about it. No, no. What's the point? Oh, it's okay, a game so. that takes. Half the time it's 40k and is uh, like if it was like a 15 minute game to play and it was like cool you can do it like on a lunch break mm-hmm. or you know something like that. They get five yeah. or six games in a night. So you wanted Shade Spire for 40k. Shade Spire for 40k. Shade Spire was great, but it yeah, didn't pick, no one picked it up in our, in our local that's store. Be, that's you know. because our the store owner and one well of the, and one of the guys that was trying to push it killed it. Yeah, but also they didn't come out the organized play packet until like. Six months after the yeah, intro. they're only now starting to really <laughs> offer. You know, and, and it's spots. like it's maybe it picks up in the future, but that's one of those games that like and needed to come out to challenge Magic and to come out strong, and they didn't come out strong. They came out with two do two bands and like yeah. trickled it out over six months, and, and it was good for sales, I'm sure, but it wasn't good for the. Promotion. But meanwhile, we can see they've learned from that mistake because already before the game's released, they're like. You know, you want your orcs, you got your orcs. You got your this faction, you got your that faction. Oh my god, buy a chandelier. Like, they've got everything. Sorry, I needed to channel my eastern, yeah, east coast rights for a second yeah. there. That but, was east uh, coast? I couldn't even, I thought it was British. No. What the hell is wrong with you? That doesn't sound, no. did that sound British to you? That was definitely not British. Yeah. And I'm not going to go into details Why? about what that sounded like. New, New Jersey? Definitely not British. Like, I, was going for, <laughs> I was going for New Jersey. You're going to have to tell me after even the though, show. Even though my family's from New York. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this will be the Patreon. Exclusive. Yeah, I know. Huh? <laughs> what was Tom really talking about? Yeah, yeah. I know. Huh? Axis he, says it was East Coast. So thank okay. you. But but like but 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 for example, like orcs coming out, right? 
that's something you're going to deal with. You're like, going to. It's going to be something in the meta for you that you will have to deal with. But the thing is, with the space works, wolves. Space yeah, wolves will be able to. Your army is equipped to deal with a lot of things because it has sixty fire wars or so sitting in the middle of the board. And if thirty orcs charge you, you kill fifteen or twenty of them yeah. in the Overwatch. And then, and then you get killed by the rest of them. Yeah. But, you know, like... <laughs> well, or, okay, no, no. One fire warrior lives because of sense of stone. You gotta remember. Right. Yeah. No, but, but the idea being that, like, this is something that's part of the series, and that's why I love the timing of it. Because we're not only getting space wolves, we're also getting orcs. And so we're going to see potentially two meta shifts while we're doing this. Right. And will it affect my list? Maybe not. But that's the point. Like, you know, people react really hard. Like, knives are thick. the point oh of a God, Bring more melts. Bring yeah, more well, tanks. The, the list is, to, is meant to, to be durable. To, yes. to be able to sustain casualties, to sustain losses, and still do what it needs to do. And as long as 7th edition Purifying Flame isn't here, I'm fine. When also, like, there's also the idea of, like, <laughs> how different can the Orc and Space Wolf Codex really be? Yeah, the Night Codex... Is was just so different compared to what it was before. Well, yeah, you added knights. You added Dominus class knights, which didn't exist before. And they're right. the things that make the knight codex good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's what I mean. I mean, I don't think the I don't think the orc and, and yeah, even with an added Lehman Russ or Gosco. Yeah, I don't think I don't think, I don't think I don't think it's yeah. I, that's what I'm. Like, I, I think orcs are gonna get better. Yeah, I don't Obviously, think it's going to be But I don't think shift. they're going to just still be like 120 boys running at you and then charging you. That's yeah, what it's going to be. more stratagems. I mean, yeah, maybe they, they can do it quicker. Maybe they'll charge you on turn one. Or, turn two. or de- yeah. depending on the clan, they get to do better with their here we go rolls or something. Yeah, I'm curious how big the, how much the clan rolls are going to be. I mean, are who they going to be more generic? I think we'll, well who knows? Yeah. It, it could be like, like Tau and no, Guard. I mean, well, it's going to be like everybody else, I guess. Well, let's put it this way. Guard was a big departure from a lot of what had come out before. Tau was interesting because it was kind of half and half. It was, here's a couple new things that people haven't seen before, like weapon extension ranges based on your choice of Sept. Uh, it was but, literally in the Guard Codex. Was it yeah. really? Okay, well then I didn't care and enough chaos. about the Goading. <laughs> see, oh, no, chaos was see that's my one. problem. I didn't know those things. Anyways. you know, I like, do think one of the best things you're coaching them in, Jeff, <laughs> is to build Learn lists stuff. from other codexes. <laughs> Actually, right. speaking of exercises, one of the one of the exercises is flashcards. Not flashcards, so much as one of the assignments will be build a list yeah. for every faction. So, not every faction. Well, the majority but factions. The, the thing is, is in between now and October, I'm going to have Tom build a faction, a, a list from every fa- to review the codex and build a list that he thinks is competitive in that faction. He can, if he wants to draw from other soupy elements for that, you know, Imperium Chaos. Sure, know, right, yeah. that's fine. But the idea is, it is actually a super helpful thought exercise to, to just go, like, open the Harlequin Codex and go, what can I do with this? Yeah. How can I build a list that can counter knights, that can counter cultist spam, <clears throat> plague bearer spam, Castellan knights, you know, whatever it is, Yanari, you know, Shining Spear stuff, you know, all the stuff that's prevalent in the meta in general. How can I build a list that, that can address all those concerns? Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build you a take-all-comers list. It's not the yeah. list that's going to win SoCal Open. Look, if you win SoCal Open, that's great. But the reality is, is our goal is to win Best in Faction, which means you can yeah. come in 20th place. And still and win Best in Faction. Best in Faction. Hopefully you'll do better than that. But, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so for the audience, and it's kind of a long ramble about Shade Spire and Kill Team and whatnot. But, we, look, the idea is to identify the meta, identify the gatekeeper list that you're going to have to worry about realistically they're going to be in in your threat range yeah. that these are going to be the lists that you're going to play because they're going to be the ones with the similar record to you you're not mm-hmm. going to if you're going to go to bao and you're you're this is your first big tournament you're not going to if you play brandon grant that's tough shit you know? like, yeah that's yeah. bad luck that's a bad draw you, you, you played him pa- round one or two or something yeah. you know well like for example my first ever gt was lvo i think 2015 and i went one and six now, true to John's comment on previous podcasts, I lost most of the games, but I had a hell of a lot of fun. So that's you know that's that's incentive to go, even if you don't, if you, if you just want to see what it's like. And that's you exactly don't what to my, your first GT experience should be. I I mean I lost every freaking game. The only game I won was because my list was designed to be anti-air, and the guy brought a bunch of land speeders, nice. and I was like murdering them, just like just just absolutely straight killing them. Real but quick. aside from that, I got destroyed. Real quick, uh, someone asked John, I guess you can answer too, Jeff. I'm not going to bother asking Tom. 
Can you make a competitive Necron list? Yes. I am not good enough to run one. That was very quick and very honest. Well, that's because he's played games. I have played enough games with Necron lists, and I've played enough games with Necron lists that very good Necron players have helped me create, and I don't win with them. And it's not because the list isn't good, it's because I'm not good enough to run it. I mean, the the winning ATC uh, team, Beast Coast, had a Necron player with three Test Rack Bolts. Yeah. Test Rack Bolts are fucking good. But even even putting Test Rack Bolts aside... Necrons can be good. They're just not a. They're overcosted for what they do because you pay a premium for reanimation. Resurri- yeah. yeah, whatever it is, reanimation protocols, and um, tip. I don't think it's worth the premium they pay. Right. You know, I I just I don't. You know, because it's unreliable. And in the end of the get, end of the day, bringing back three or four models in a unit over the course of the game isn't worth an extra point per model, you know, or whatever it is. Yeah. The game which I puts the, the cost as. Essentially, they're scout marines with a better gun, but they cost, you know... That's right, because they have the same armor. More, more, yeah, more... They only uh, have a four-up save? Yeah. And they're oh, wow. slower. Yeah. They're, what, five-inch Five movement? Five-inch Oh. Yeah. But, so, okay. So, the idea is identify where you're gonna, who you're going to be facing if you can. If yep. you can't, try and design a list that's all comers. But the biggest piece of advice I can give you is is to, to build a list and try and give yourself about two-month lead time before you want to perform at the tournament. Because I feel like the biggest, not mistake, but pitfall people play in is they play one game with their list and then they try and rewrite it. Mm-hmm. And yep. I mm-hmm. think it's a that's mm-hmm. a problem because yeah. as you'll see on competitive Facebook groups, you know, variance is, we don't live in statistical 40K, we live in variance 40K where there's that's you're, you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna have wild swings in the dice because it's a dice game and yeah, if you played a million games, you're going to get to the statistical average. But right. the reality is you're going to have a game where your your units shit the bed or they overperform. And so you might overvalue or undervalue a particular unit. You need to have a, a, at least some sort of sample size prior to making big changes. Mm-hmm. You know, And so that's a thing I, I've advocated in our team for quite some time and in, in, in just in competitive 40K is build a list, play the shit out of it for multiple reasons. First, so you know the list. You need to be able to recite every statistic that your te- your list has that's you know relevant. You don't need to know everything about the list. You can open the book, but you should be able to rattle off most of the important statistics of your guns, stratagems, you know, uh, stat blocks on your uh, data sheets and stuff like that. Special rules. You should be able to do that. And the re- the way you do that is not by just reading the book and memorizing it. If, the, if you're the kind of person who can do that, great. If not, you do that by playing the unit a lot and looking at the rules. So when you're playing your games that are you know casual test games. Try not to just go, I think this is the rule. I think this is what their movement is. Mm-hmm. Even if you're sure, open the book because people learn by reading, yep. hearing, and seeing. And so if you see you the book... also learn better in the moment of using. Exactly. Yep. And yes. try not to let yourself... This is kind of an aside, but try not to let yourself do take-backs too much, even with your friends. Yes. Because you learn more by pain. failing in pain than you do by just letting everyone... I mean, obviously, if you're playing a game with your buddy... Do whatever you want to do, but if you want to be serious about improving your game, you need to remember more. Yes. You need to remember your rules, and if you don't remember your rules, you should pay the consequences. Because at a tournament, your opponent may or may not be kind enough to allow you to do a take back. You know, and um, it's not it's not up to them to allow you. I mean, we talked earlier in the podcast about you know what's considered sportsmanlike and what's it what isn't, but up to a certain point, if you forget something, your opponent has the right to say no you forgot it yeah if i tell you no you can't take that back that's not me being unsportsmanlike in fact you can make the better case that you pushing to be allowed to break the rules to go back and do something is actually unsportsmanlike yeah especially if you've switched phases i mean it's one thing if you if you if you deep strike a move a, a unit and there's one one unit you forgot to actually move and you're like oh i need to move this one unit and then i'll deep strike i've moved everything else i'm fine versus Oh, I'm halfway through shooting my army and I forgot my psychic face. Like I've seen that happen. Like you know, like shut well, up, look, Tom. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the rea- the reality is, is you you cannot expect your play, your opponent to give you a take back. Yeah. And it's not a it's not a bad sportsman. Uh, it's not a you, that your opponent's not being a bad sport by refusing to allow you to do something in a tournament. No. Yeah. The, the, the tournament is designed to to test your skill against other players and for one person to be the winner. And part of being a skilled 40K player, whether you like it or not, 
is remembering rules and doing things in the proper sequence. Yep. You know, um, th- th- that's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Um, I have to say that it was actually Jeff's advice that got me to realize that I need to do this over here rather than the Necrons. Because I sat down and I played a bunch of games with the Necron list that I really wanted, which Mm. was like the 70-something Warriors. And we all talked about it, and we were all on the fence about it. Like, it could be good, it could be bad, we'll see what's going on. I didn't want to build three Tesseract Vaults. I don't want to do that list. It's not even a good list. So I play a bunch of games with it. It's okay. I play a bunch of games with it, and I realize, you know what? Jeff's right. I played a bunch of games with it. I tried it. It's not going to work. I'm going to punt to something that's mid-tier, that I know is mid-tier, but runs itself, basically. Yeah. And then to, to end to end the note on, like... Which is also, know. by the way, mostly now three colors. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to end Turn the note... Ready. So now you're eligible for prize support. Uh, well, I got to do the base. You got to do the base. apparently is what happened on Saturday. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Uh, long story short, we had, a, we had a store tournament. It was a local RTT. Full painting basing requirements had to, ha- had to be there. For yeah. prize support. First, second, and third technically won, got their ITC points. They those There's were not right. denied, but in terms of prize support, it went yeah. to the fourth, fourth fifth, and sixth. That because it be. I mean, if you be, don't, if you come to an RGT and don't bring playing models, you shouldn't expect to win a prize. No, exactly. And if you want to win, that's fine. And that's a very minor but very important note to preparing for a GT <laughs> or RT. Make sure your shit's ready. Well, yeah, no, make sure so you know what the, what the rules are for the event before you go to it. Yeah, just make sure you know the rules and. and you know, just, this is common shit. So but what if what if my third color is under my other two colors, John? Or what if it's three different shades of white, Adam? <laughs> color blind. I don't know. Don't ask me. Yeah. Um, I will. That's I will. it. Jeff's in charge of the paint judging for LVO. Well, I, I think the current paint judging rules are too. S- t- Which one? Too lenient. Three colors is a bullshit standard. That's GW standard. Sure, um, it's bullshit. But you know, whatever. Before I mean, we, could, I, I, I like. I like. You know. You at least attempted to make your army look good. Like, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be good. Yeah, I just don't like. I just good. don't like that wash is considered a color. Right. Yeah. I can handle wash. I don't like um, that bases bases can be painted to be considered basic. They can. But I don't like that. Oh, you don't like. You don't. You I want, don't you, like that. You want to see some gravel. I want there to be. Oh, he wants actual basing. Sand. I want actual basing. My army, to be fair. Isn't much more than three colors. It's you know a color. I wash it. I pick out some highlights. I do some gems. But, but the way you paint it has texture. Yeah it, yeah, it it looks good from the, the yeah, tabletop. Have, so you're talking about your. I, I have like seven colors on my army, or whatever it is, ten colors. Yeah. yeah. But like the point is, is I do highlighting. I, I make it look okay. Yeah. I'm not a fucking good painter. I, I mean, the, you, the part of the hobby that I dislike. No, you're the most, no, you're but, you're a, no, yeah. you're you're not a fucking good painter, but you're a good painter. I mean, I look, I base my shit so it looks okay. Yeah, and exactly. Like, when, and you, when you have a highlight that stands out, which is what I'm asking for. Yeah. Three that's, colors, a dry brush, and a base, and it will look good enough. Yeah. 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 Um, I will before we continue. Uh, Access of Entropy has a really good point, and this is regarding the sportsman like what you allow your opponent to take back versus what it's allowed to you. And he said that he feels like the movement phase is one phase for him. Where he lets anybody take back something, but he often doesn't let anybody take stuff back after that. If it's like for for say example a forgotten psychic phase, he'll be like, okay, you can do your smites, but nothing else. And so I, the reason why I like that is for me, I have something similar. I will let you take, I will let you fix something, as long as you haven't started something in the next phase. So I started shooting. Oh wait, but I forgot to move this guy. Nope, you started shooting. Oh, I deep struck. Oh, I forgot to move this guy. That's fine. We're still in a single phase. You know, like Yeah, I mean as long as look, this you is nothing hold to yourself to your own standard. This well, and that's also to... the gentleman's agreement between you and your opponent. Yeah. If you're the kind of look, this is the only thing I'll say. If you're the kind of player who's not gonna let anyone take any take backs, say that at the beginning of the game. Communicate that to your opponent at the beginning of the game so you guys are on the same foot. You're very well within your rights to not let someone take anything back. Oh yeah. But this it's something that you should communicate to your opponent so that they know to be on their A game. Which you should be at if you're going to a big tournament, you should try and be on your A game anyways. Especially a GT. Um, yeah, I mean my, my my personal rule is I'll let my opponent take something back if they'll let me take something back. Once. Just once. One take back is all I'll permit and all I'll ask for. It's also really important rounds one and two. Like for a player like Jeff, who's managed the top eight at LVO, it's important for a player like Jeff round one and two to be like look I'm trying to win this whole thing and I'm we're going to play the game tight yeah well 
to, to, to sidetrack even more because that's what we do in this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, it's called it's goes for, it's, it's what is it tangent for yeah, sure. Yeah. Guys, tangent uh, fucking guys. Please, please tangent stop. Fucking please guys. stop trying to do acronyms. I love on acronyms. the fly. I love you're acronyms. Not very good at it. No, it's not. <laughs> But um, I'm practicing. That's my the first, whole point. Practice first, at home. My first game at the LVO <laughs> like was against like, a, a local guy from LA who I'd never played before. He's from like South Bay. Okay. But um, he brought a Death Car army. He was like, I haven't played since Sixth Edition or something like that. And oh, I, I literally, he said it to me, and I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. You know, like I don't think I'm gonna lose. I've, I've got I've got Dark Reapers. Do you know what those are? No. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. He, he had like nerglings in his Death Guard battalion. Was still trying to like get the like command benefits and stuff mm-hmm. and all. And I was just like, that's uh, you know like the, so he could advance and shoot because he had a bunch of plague marines and wanted to advance them and shoot the rapid fire. And yeah. I was like, I, I I don't care. Whatever. That's fine. And I just I I played the game with them and we. We could have gotten further the game if I had been like stringent about it, but I was cool. I let, I'm like, we're playing cool. Like, take back whatever you need to play the game, because I wasn't really, you know, like not to be mean, but I was like, look, this guy hasn't played since sixth edition, and unless he's some savant, he's not gonna like <laughs> know the rules well enough to like play me at the game. Maybe he was like, you know, getting in my head and just like fucking. <laughs> you know, but it turned out not to be the case. But we had a good game, and so you can have a relaxing game at a, at a GT and still win. But if you're if you kind of suss out your opponent and see that your opponent is a competent player, yeah, and you know, um, you know, for instance, in round six, I played uh, a really competent player. Uh, Matt, I think his name is Matt. And uh, at the end of the game, at LVO, yeah, uh, uh, I believe it's Matt. He's from the yeah, uh, uh, Battle Host Host podcast. Really good guy, and he. Um, at the end of the game, I forgot to do something. I forgot to shoot, and I was. And he was like, "No, you can't do it." And I. I got salty for half a second. I was like, fuck, what the fuck? That's not cool. And then he was like, we're, we're, we're at tape top, you know, we, we're both five, zero, and one, bro. And I'm like, fair enough, sir. Good point. <laughs> Tip the hat. Yeah, and, 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 and we, we played the game out amicably. It wasn't any, like, there right. wasn't much salt, but I was just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, we are, we're here. We're, we're aiming for the top, so we're going to hold each other to a higher standard. And it was a good game, and that was the kind of thing where we didn't, there wasn't any animosity or anything like that. But if you're... Uh, the teaching point here is that if you're going to a tournament, you should expect to not have many opportunities to go back and rewind time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just you shouldn't expect that. Um, yeah, if you've ever played a game with me, I will never go back and do some, fix something that I forgot. I just nudge it when you're not looking. Nice. Well, I'll take my tape measure <laughs> and extend it fully and knock Adam's models over when he's not yeah. really looking. And break so. them. <laughs> what we're trying to say is they cheat with each other, but no one else. Or I don't know. Maybe so, Back to our, our kind of our roadmap for the yes. the preparing for a tournament. You want to look identify what the tournament is, the tournament rules. Identify what you think you'll see there to the extent of your ability, and if you can't, just go and listen to every forty k podcast you can get your hands on and figure out what's good at the time. Or Google Netlists. That's another one. Fuck, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I lost the track. other the other thing is or if you have the BCP app you yeah yes. BCP app if you have a BCP well, app you have to have subscription, the subscription yes you can go back to previous tournaments and look at lists if they're uploaded then and then you want to you want to build your list designed to play what you think you're gonna face so if you're like think you're gonna do three and three four and two you want to plan around playing the gatekeeper list plan yep. around playing those those boogeymen from the internet you know. So you want to build a list and play it a lot because what's going to happen is you want to give yourself two months. You want to give about, I would recommend 10 games. That's one a week with maybe two or three weeks where you're playing two games. And you want to play it against a variety of opponents, mm-hmm. by a variety of different army types. So, if, you know, do not do not be afraid to say, ask your good friend to say, hey, can you run this yeah. crazy net list, three test rec vaults or whatever. I want to see how I fare against it. Or... Three Bane Blades or th- Four Knights or, or Chaos Cultist Cancer or whatever. Ask your buddy to do it and don't be afraid to use proxies. I mean, like part of the thing about being good is you have to just say, look, we're going to play this game. It's not going to look pretty, but it's going to, you know, it's going to help me train. When you're prepping for something, nobody cares about a proxy. Yeah, yes. exactly. It's right. not a tournament. Yeah, you are playing your buddy to increase your chances of winning the tournament or, or doing well the tournament. And so that's, that's okay. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Um, and play the fucking missions. Yes. That you're going to. I mean, most of the missions we go to, the uh, tournaments we go to here in Southern California and the California region, West Coast, it's all ITC. Yeah. So it's not a big deal because that's what we play locally. But if you're going to go to Nova, play Nova missions. Play 10 or 12 Nova missions. You know, I'll get figure those it out games. when I get there. 
Yeah, I mean, look, you can get it figured out when you get there. You might do all right, but the reality is, is you will be. I'll do all right. You'll do better than you would have done had you played ten to twelve missions. Uh, yeah, I don't have a ticket. Games with that mission, you know. <laughs> um, I'm not playing Mike Brand's Nova missions. Wow! Wow! Shots fired. Um, no, Mike and I are fine. So <laughs> the other thing I would I would yeah. say is just uh, I won't say why. Shut but. up, Adam. <laughs> What's the other thing you're going to say, Jeff? Okay. Um, would be to try not to make any big changes into your list during those 10 to 12 games. You know, if if you're going to make a big change to your list, at least try and get five or six games in with the list before you make those drastic, drastic changes. And then give yourself another five or six games to get used to the list. To know, I mean, for me, I'm the kind of guy who's like, look, I haven't played against a Castellan. I kind of think I know what my list will do against a Castellan. But unless until I play that game yeah. and yeah. shoot at the Castellan and go, shit, I'd do shit to that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I should have shot everything else. Thing, you know, like I'm not gonna realize that, so I need to play against that list. So try playing against a lot of lists that you think you'll see in the in the tournament that you're gonna be playing at. Um, and then familiarize yourself with the list. You're gonna I, I always recommend that you play with the chess block. I think it's um, it's it will help you as a player. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, I think that you have to for when chess clock rules first came out for 40k a couple months ago, I was playing with people in our local league, and I was just saying, "Yeah, we'll just kind of use it, and if, if we go over, no big deal. Like we'll just kind of it's there just as a mm-hmm. as a metric for for us to know." But I found that that wasn't that didn't provide you any fire under the ass to 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 prompt you to move faster in your game. So I would recommend if you if you think that you're a slow player, or if you want to just make sure that you're not a slow player, player play with the chess clock. You're talking about. Not on purpose slow playing. Correct. Correct. If you yes. if you are unintentionally slow playing, which is everybody. <laughs> yes. For, it's everyone. You 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 are a slow player. If you're going to a tournament, you're probably a slow player. If you haven't practiced with this with a chess block and you practice with the chess block, you're gonna run out of time. Just what's gonna happen? And it may be both of you. You're an opponent. You know, like uh, that's yeah. just how it goes. Um, and in your practice games, it's fine. But once you've gotten to the point where you're familiar enough with your army and you're ready to kind of go from like testing the list against. You know, just to kind of see if the theory works to actually getting ready for the tournament, you're going to want to try the chess clock and you're going to want to play the real rules for the chess clock. So if you run out of time, you're done. You yep. lose the game. And the reason why is because that's going to put that fire under your ass to play faster and to, to you're going to have to stop making some rules. So let's say, for instance, yeah. for Tom, yep. you have sense of stone up, right? You're like, oh, I got a six up, feel no pain. And someone shoots you with two damage guns. Don't even fucking roll them, because if yep. the, if your opponent hits the clock over to you and you're roll and you take twenty seconds to roll those things, you know that's not you didn't need to do it because the likelihood of you to roll two sixes is like you know yeah. one in thirty six. It's not, very small. Yeah, I'm well, not saving you know, all those. Guys. Depends, but when I played him, you know, he rolled sixes for days in the beginning. Right. Well, that was that was for C, that was for CP steel. <laughs> Yeah, always roll those. But Which I still lost, the, the by the way. The point I'm trying to make is that as when you're trying to go quicker and with uh, with the chess clock, you're going to need to not shoot some things or, uh, you know, just forego some elements of your army that could yeah. do so, theoretically do something, but in reality won't. They're not worth the time you're going to spend to roll those dice. Yeah, to, hit the, don't the, waste well, time, basically. Towards the, towards the end, there's certain things you can do or not do or not roll that because they don't matter in that yeah. game. Yeah. Like, for instance, me, I'm running Tyranids in our current league, and um, I have a Turbagon, the big mama, and she has a gun yeah. of some sort. I don't know what it does. Cause some I don't roll, I don't roll it because it's just like it's like four shots or something, and yeah. it's like she's always advancing, and I don't. she hits on a four anyway, so I don't care. It's not. It's not worth me rolling it. And that's not why you're bringing her. Yeah, I mean, bring her because she can spawn termagants, and yeah. she's a you know like a big motherfucker. She hits hard. <laughs> and she's not good in combat either. Is it? No, she's something yeah. good. She spawns termagants, yeah. and that's yeah. it. Oh, she's not you good. You don't take the prime. An easy no. way to think. Well, of this is the big mama. The well, yeah, there's there's the termagant and the termagant prime. Are you thinking of the um, uh, the burrowing one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about the big mama who spawn actually like birds termagants. Yeah. Isn't that the tri? Oh, Trigon. You're thinking That's Trigon. Oh, I'm thinking Trigon. You're thinking yeah. Trigon. The Trigon, the one with birds. Oh, there. I don't yeah. clearly like, just play against Tyranids more often. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've only played against my brother once. Well, think of it this way. Like, if I'm running a shooting army, right? And if you run a shooting army and you want to save your time, think of it this way. I'm going pick, I'm to pick this unit to shoot. Am I taking a critic? Am I taking an important shooting like attack? Or am I making pot shots? 
If you're taking pot shots, odds are you can probably skip them. No, I mean, look, it all depends. It, there's always exceptions and that's why when you should do odds. it, when you shouldn't do yeah. it. Like if Situations. you're running a, a night list and you're like, I'm gonna shoot my heavy stubber. You know, like you know, oh go, boy, right? You know, go shoot the heavy stubber. You got a fucking lot of time. You're playing nights. It's, <laughs> like, go go nuts. You know, but if you're I like, I shot every one of my heavy stubbers all the yeah. games I played. But if you're running, <laughs> you, you know, roll the dice one at a time too. No, I'm not a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, time. yeah. <laughs> two, two and then the time. third on its own, uh, after kissing it and whispering it to it that he loves it no matter what. I'm not a Slanesh player. I don't lick my models. I didn't say lick. I said kiss. Yeah, well, I played against a player that licked his models. But he was so. a player that used to do that. We'll, yes. we'll get over that. Uh, I'm not going to get over that. It's no, burning my retinas. You to see it. That's something. No, yeah, that's something that burrows into your head. <laughs> um, but the idea is like, look, if you're playing like 80 guard and you're like. I need to shoot my, my last pistol at the night. You know, it's like, <laughs> I mean, fuck me. Come on, get over it. It's not, you're not going to do any damage, so just don't waste the time. Um, no, because what I what I have found in playing the clock is that most of the most of my games, both players are tracking time relatively at the same level. So you'll get through five turns on average if you're really playing to try and minimize your turn length. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're both of you are just kind of playing casually. You'll get through four turns, no problem. Getting through turn five and six is where the effort comes in. It either mm-hmm. one of you, it's either two, one of two things. Either one of you or both of you has quick playing armies like knights because mm-hmm. there's not a lot of stuff to move, not a lot of dice to roll for shooting. Or you guys are just both really good and your guys are playing quickly yeah. and you can get through six turns. You know? Or you've just decimated each other on turn one and you only have like six units left. Amongst right. the two of you for the rest of the game, yeah. Well, you're both um, really good, and one of you is slow playing, and then you don't finish. Wow. <laughs> I think that's the clock happening. will take care of that, John. Sorry, that was my inner judge coming out. <laughs> so I watched that game. So, you know, th- these are the kind of things that we're saying, look, this is what you can do to improve your game. Um, getting that familiar familiarity with your list will speed up your game. It'll allow you to know what your army can and can't do, and it'll hopefully pave the way to victory. Look at this cat's butt hole. (laughs) (laughs) Cat just came up and just was like straight anus. That's the the friendly one. Yeah, she's she's very nice. That's the pain in the ass. The other thing that you want to do, and this is one of the the things that Tom will be doing off air, is is studying the other codexes. You know, borrow your friend's codex, read it, try and understand what it does. If you expect that you're going to run into three test rack bolts, you should know what they do. You should know what yep. their stats are, what powers they can cast, what they can do. If you if you if you've heard about what shining spears can do in their Yunari, you should probably look into it. There's a, a vast amount of resources, even if you don't own the codexes, yeah. where you can go get those things. Um, you know, and look at that kind of what they do. But you should kind mm-hmm. of familiarize yourself with your opposition that you're going to play because it'll come into. Um, I hear the War Seer is a good source. What was right. that? War Seer? You just go to yes. War Seer? No, D4 Chan or whatever it is. One D4 Chan is actually really good, even if it's not the best idea in terms of what they're presenting as a tactics, it gives you ideas. I don't think anybody even knows what War Seer is anymore. <laughs> Except for me and you. Yeah. Casey. For sure. I'm not even gonna Guaranteed. Go there. I'm not even gonna go there. Guaranteed he knows. So the last couple things we'll probably leave you guys with there, is, is what you can expect in the future from yep. the, the video content. Um, the drills you're going to see are things like list assessment. This is something you can practice. You can you can take a list, a net list that you, can, you think you're going to see, and you can just you can p- do a mental exercise with yourself where you just pull it up. Well, oh, I just heard there was a GT this weekend. What yeah. was the winning list? Pull it up on your phone or your your computer and just look at it and go like if I was sitting across from the table from that list what in that list is a threat to my army and what in my army is good at uh, uh, good at defeating that list so if you if you pull up a list you can go shit this this thing can really fuck me up or I'm not worried about anything in this list it's not mm-hmm. too I, I have counters for everything I this is a good matchup for me being able to make those assessments on the fly will help you when you get to the tournament, because you'll be able to, you'll you'll have looked at a lot of lists in the past, just kind of casually as a thought exercise, and you'll kind of have think, thought like, you know what, my Riptide is actually not optimally used against the Castell, and it's better used against the the uh, the uh, uh, Gallant Knight, who doesn't have as good a save. He's 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 more vulnerable to my fire. 
you know, so I can bring down the two Gallant Knights instead of the Castella Knight with the same amount of firepower or something like that, you know. Mm. So this is the kind of thing that you can kind of think about in one of the, the, the skill exercises that we'll be demonstrating. So what the, the, the planned video content is, we'll, we'll present Tom with a list. He'll go, he'll, he'll talk through to the audience about what he thinks the list mm. can do to him and what he thinks he can do against the list with his list. And then we'll practice the deployment. So we'll, we'll sit down. He'll, he'll deploy something, one of someone else will deploy something, and they'll go back and forth just like it's a real game. Yep. And at the end of that deployment and during the deployment, we'll be talking about what tactically Tom is thinking and what tactically his opponent is thinking at the time. And then we'll kind of recap the deployment and where, where things stand before the game starts. What happens if Tom gets first turn? What happens if his opponent gets first turn? Yeah. Let's look at how we've deployed, and then maybe we do it again. Maybe we say pick everything up, and how can you deploy better against this army because you made some critical errors or something like that. We'll do that yeah. again. Um, and this is something you can do with your friends. I mean, you could just even theory theory this out in your head if you want to, but it's better to get the, the tangible practice where you just get to your friend and say, hey, bring some models over. We'll say this is the Castellan, this is the Blood Angel Captain, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Let's practice deployment. We can do that three times in 30 minutes. It's no big deal. And you can get an idea of what you would do in the first stage of the game, which is a very important stage of the game. So I think that's kind of a, a drill that we want to show off. One of the other things is, you know, target priority. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating movement uh, phase kind of playbook uh, tests. You know, so mm -hmm. we'll, I'll present Tom with a with a with a challenge. Can you do this with? in this turn can you do these three meet these three objectives with these limited resources and he'll try and do it and those will hopefully um, I, I'm the plan is to have them be applicable to all armies um, and I may even have Tom perform them with non Tau armies so that he kind of under first of all understands what those other armies can do yep and you know obviously brief him on what what that army these units can do specifically so he's not like in the dark in case it's like a yeah. Or, or I'll do the homework beforehand. Yeah, yeah. and so that, that's kind of the idea there. We'll, we'll People don't him. do homework. I don't know anybody that does homework. Yeah. Not to I'm the a morning. teacher, I don't know anybody that does homework. <laughs> Not till the morning before. Is that the, t is that the, the student or the teacher, John? I, I well, I don't assign homework. I give all my students well, enough well, there time you go. to finish everything. You're your own self-fulfilling prophecy. If they, if they have homework, it's because they screw around the class. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So if Tom has homework, it's because he screwed around during the games, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So much. But luckily, yeah. I can buy extra credit with booze. Uh, yeah, see, my students can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Advantage, Tom. Yes. <laughs> um, I would agree to that. And then this is, the last thing I want to say is, um, for these, these drills is also, um, this isn't so much something you can show with a drill, but it's, it's something about you're playing against yourself and your dice. You know, yeah. This is something Tom brought up in, in the show notes, is that, like, look, you have to plan for the worst. And that's why you build redundancy into your list. Mm -hmm. That's why you build protective elements into your list so that you, even if you go second and you get blasted, you'll still have something that can do something. And you're going to have, hopefully, some ability in your list to, to, to deal with bad dice rolls. Because every person who's good at 40K will tell you, don't, you can't blame the dice. Yep. There's games where you dice shit on you, and you know what? That sucks. <laughs> There's ones nothing, and twos some, and threes, oh my! <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you roll nothing but ones the whole game, you're gonna lose no matter what you do. You know, just this is how it is. But that's got so not, many jokes right now. <laughs> that, that's not how it's, that's not how it's gonna work because you're you're first of all you're probably no suffering from you. perception bias. Yes. And secondly, you should plan on things going poorly. Yeah. You know, if you need to absolutely do this one thing to roll that six for the advance or or uh, kill this one model to, to win the game, you've 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 misplayed the, the turns that came before that. Yeah. And you know, if you if you're like, oh shit, I, I need recon on turn six and I forgot to get it on turns one, two, and three, mm. well, you know, that's a that's an error on your part. Either that or it's the greatest game of forty K ever played and those are like two grandmasters playing where it's like no. You know, we're never gonna see that, so hence yeah. it's a joke. If you're if you're the if you're the proverbial, you know, average Joe of forty K who wants to go to a tournament and do better and you're listening to this for that kind of advice, these are the kind of things you have to plan for. You can't yep. you can't expect your dice to be average every game. Some games will be above average, some games will be average, some games will be below average, and you're gonna have that perception bias where you think 
most of your games are below average, but that's not really what's happening. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like, maybe statistically it is. Maybe if you... What's really it. happening is you suck. But yeah, and it's also that. I mean, like, it is. I mean, it, it's it's real talk. You know, it's like you have to... If you're not good, it's be it, one of the problems is, is you're gonna think that your things can do more than they can, and you're gonna bitch about it when yeah. they can't. When they it, list form. fluency is something we've talked about a lot before, and we've talked about it in our team chat. But like, you have to know what your list can do and can't do. Yeah. If you don't know what your list can and can't do, then you have no expectation of being able to say like, "Oh, the dice killed me," because you don't know what your list can do. Yeah. It wasn't the dice you made p- poor decisions. Yeah. And that's you know that's that's really what I have planned for you for the next couple months is just kind of like drill those concepts into your head. And a lot of this stuff is going to be happening off the off air, you know, in our local leagues and stuff like that. But uh, we'll, you, you know, know, we'll put the good stuff up. Yeah. So expect most of it uh, on YouTube. Yeah. Before my the, the plan is two battle reports and um, two kind of drill skill exercise videos. Okay. Yeah. YouTube and then live streams or no? Uh, we might live stream the the battle reports. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. That's what Optimistically, so the drills are on YouTube. Will be on YouTube at the very least, but the battle reports will probably be on 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 our Twitch stream, and then port it over to YouTube. Yeah. Whether we do them here or in, in uh, my place is you know, whatever it doesn't matter. I guess it just depends on whether you want a uh, car driving by or planes flying. Yeah, we either have cars honking <laughs> and yelling out for their passengers, or you know what? It was it was have the windows open or the air conditioner running. It's only early nineties, low nineties today. <laughs> early nineties, like grunge. Low night. Well, you know, <laughs> no, Dawson's Creek. Late, oh my that's god, late, that's yeah, late nineties. That's late nineties. Early nineties. I got a lot of my nice to three colors tonight. And I'm pretty proud of myself. Flavor, flavor. Are you taking them to BAO? Yeah, I'm not taking the Necron. You're not taking the Necron? No, I'm not taking the Necron. What if you take the Necrons, but like on the night bases, like their ornamentation? If I take the Necrons with me, it's going to be because I made an arrangement to sell them to somebody who's going to German. <laughs> Didn't you sell an army to somebody or buy an army? I, at- bu- I bought a bunch of Zinch stuff from uh, Anthony O'Dell. Oh, that's and right. Sold it. Like, and then I held on to it for a while and I put some paint on some of it and I was like, you know what? This is 7th edition. I don't really want to do this. Yeah. They yeah. Sold so you sold it. But that's not rare for me. I sell them. So, John, when are you going to bring the, the Bay, Area, Bay Area open to close out the podcast? Okay. So, okay. We're going to go through that. So, uh, you're going, right, Jeff? And Adam's going, so we'll I'm go through going. our list. Uh, so, I'm going to we'll run. Because you run. probably won't get another episode from us until after. You, you absolutely will not. Because next week, if I don't, if I stream Practice. some games Thursday, I will. Oh, that's right. We're but if I don't, I'm still practicing. Like, yeah. I'm going to do basic minimal painting to get these things to three colors and base, and that's it. Like, this is not... Most of the time, my armies don't look bad. I don't want to toot my own horn, but when I go to big tournaments, no, normally my armies look fine. They look good. John, are you saying you don't often do something, but when you do, it is this? I, I do it well. Are you memeing um, yourself right I'm now? memeing myself. So th- this one's probably going to be pretty minimal because I'm gonna, I want to devote time to practicing as much as possible with this list. Um... Because we were talking Tuesday night. Yeah. Jeff, Tom, and I, like, if I practice this list, I can actually do decently well with it. And I would like to actually do decently well with it. Knights, I feel like, have a high... Uh, even though people disagree on the internet, they have a high skill threshold. Yeah. The better yeah. you are with them, the more the better you're going to do in the, in the tournament. They are very but... easy to trounce people at the low tables with. Yeah. But at the middle tables and then at the high tables, it's going to be difficult. So I'm running a list that has a super heavy detachment. And it's got um, a Castellan, uh, two Gallants, and a Crusader. And um, probably House Raven. I actually really like House Raven. I understand that there's other ones like... Uh, I know, Adam, you like Terran. Um, I like Terran, but I can't do... Well, I'll discuss why mine, but right. mine would be Terran. I mean, there are, other, there are several good houses. But I think that Raven works best, one, for my play style. And two, it works best because like it's very clear what Warlord trait stratagems and relics you take and i like lists that don't require me to do a lot of thinking pre-game per opponent i like lists that are take all comers where i can set it up and be like i'm taking these three these things pretty much every game and i'm going to play the game i'm going to play the game this way and then in game my decisions 
change based on what my opponent's playing. Right? Yeah, and that's a, and that's a good thing to do, right? Because you're setting yourself up for like a foundation of I know what I'm doing, no matter what happens. Yeah, which means that you're not required to think as much on the fly as somebody who prepares for one kind of list and then shows up and they're like, yeah. and they don't. Well, play, I didn't think of hordes, and they don't play against that yeah. list at all. Yeah. I'm not good at thinking on the fly. I'm not. And yeah, when it comes to 40k, I'm not. I'm not good at that. Um, what about thinking about flies? Sorry, I need to get one last shitty joke in no. before I cost it. Uh, and then the other part of the list is uh, Astra Militarum uh, CP battery. Yep. So it's two company commanders. One's the warlord with the grand strategist. The other one's and he's got the um, Akila of Kirov. Kirov's Aqu- Aquila. Aquila. Yeah. Right. So you're and then is, them? wait, are you splitting them or no? No, one guy has to have both. No, they don't. Have That's what I'm have. saying. The one guy's the warlord, and he has Kirov's Aquila. Well, the grand yeah. strategist is the, the warlord. Grand trait. strategist is the warlord. Yeah, trait. The but warlord. Te- but technically, but technically, you could put the relic on the other company commander. Right, but I'm not going to do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you put it on the same. Usually, you put it on the same. Right. Yeah. Because one, I'm not thinking of that, and two, I don't care. There you go. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, and then the other three things in that list to make it a battalion are three infantry squads with mortars. And uh, Jeff and I were talking the other night about Mordian. Uh, with plasma guns for oh, so character target, sniping, so you can target characters. And I have the models I can build to do it. Um, and my it's, my it's, it's my one of those things is like if you add it in, cool. If not, yeah. It's, it's, it, and it and my matter. only there, stumbling block to that, Jeff, is is actually ironically is because what I just said about painting is hobby. And we are saying because my guys are currently built with just legs and torsos, right? I haven't added the arms and the heads yet. And we were looking at the models and I was like, oh man, these guys could easily be Mordian if you just put a different head on them. And I got to thinking about it and I was like, there's plenty of third parties that have like Mordian heads, but I can't get them in time. Yeah, you're not going to get them in time. And I'm not going to then crack the heads off later. So what I might do later is for Hammer Wrath, I might actually do squads of Mordians and just to try it out and see for Hammer Wrath because that's a minor change. Yeah. Like the core of the list is not Astro Militarum. The core of this list is the knights. Or yeah. Knights. And the National Militarium is just like, whatever. They're, they're, but, they're, but, uh, but yeah. to be real, you could just have the Kadian models, paint them up, and just say they're Mordian. Absolutely. Yeah. But you can do the blues. I you the personally helmets. don't like doing that. Sure. Right. That's I, fair. Per- I agree. I, it, it would bug me too. Well, well, I mean, yeah. what about, I mean, that you're, you're talking about you can't. I'm already, to, to, to be upfront, I'm already either thinking of painting the Astro Militarium blue or brownish. So, I mean, I could just be like, hey, I'm painting them blue because they're Mordians. But for me personally, I want the heads. Yeah, that because makes sense. Like if I was running a Talaran list, I'd want all those cool-ass cows. Yes, you would want those guys. Or like the Steel Legion gas masks yeah. and the Kree or the Kree Well, and the other thing masks. is, which we've talked about on the show before, like my intro to 40K was watching two armies play against each other when I went to a game store to play the Pokemon card game and play D&D, a pickup game of D&D. And these guys were playing... And the, the two books I got were the Dark Angels book from 3rd thir- uh, Edition and the uh, Imperial Guard. And I remember looking at the Imperial Guard 3rd Edition book and being like, those Mordians are fucking sick. And Valhalla ones, too. Yeah. Like, I love those I still have the special character from Valhalla. What's his face? I don't remember his name. Yeah, I don't remember it's his name. It's not even either. the new codex. Yeah. But they, he had the funky hat, I saw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he had the different hat. Yeah. But anyway, so what like about, if what I'm going to play Mordians, I want them to look like Mordians. What about local hobby stores? Like, do you think there's like a third party local hobby store around here that would have those kind of bits? I do, I'm not going to worry about it for BAL. I might because well, Astro Militarum squads are so cheap. This is this you is can the, get them on eBay for like twenty dollars. Unfortunately, they stopped selling the metal. Yeah, well, almost, I think almost yeah. all of them. That's why you got to go third party. Yeah, I just this, need is, this is what yeah. this is one of those things that I I kind of was talking about during our. Uh, train the, the the episode here was that's a change it's like you don't need that is not whether you're fucking Mordian or Cadian isn't gonna give it's not gonna make any difference whether you win any of your games. I'm gonna tell you right now. At no point are you going like fuck I would have won that game if only I could have to shot the guy as character, you know and like it's a cool like thing that you can do and it's like you know that's the kind of min maxing that people do with their list and it's all all well and good. But the reality is you're taking the guard battalion for fucking CP generation and to yeah. give you a little bit of board presence. Yeah. Yeah. The, Objective control. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever it is. I mean, like, it doesn't matter. You know, like, it, that, those are minor elements that that you, if you if you stress about them for too too much, too long, you're not gonna. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be productive. 
You know, there, yes, there's ways you can improve every army out there. Anyone's list, you can go like, let me nitpick this shit, you know? And it's like, <laughs> as long as the core concept doesn't change and you practice the core concept, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Jeff, you're taking your BAO list? I mean, your LVO list? Uh, it modified since the FAQ, but yeah, I mean, I also... I broke, I'd like to, broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Well, you weren't a six Dark Reaper guy. No. So I mean, you not worry about that. I had, yeah. I'm taking my LVO list with modifications. I had to drop some of my missile launchers on my... No Drukari? I want to run Drukari. Um, I just don't have them painted. Sure. Or okay. And, and I, I need two more Taluses, but I mean, like... Everything else, if I have half the army's paint, half it's not, and I'm, yeah. I hate hobbying. So. But if you also know Eldari anyways, like, that's a list fluency thing, you yeah. know it. I would, if I it. took out Dark Eldar, it would be very, like, ad hoc, and, like, you know, I played three games with it or something, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be as familiar with it. So, to me, it's, you know, I'm bringing my Eldar, because I know it, it's good, it has answers to everything. I don't know how it's going to do against Knights, I've only played one game against Knights, and I'm going to play another one this weekend, Hopefully a few more before BAL. We can play Tuesday. Yeah. So um, you're saying that playing against a faction once isn't just enough? You no. Know. Tune in more. <laughs> oh, my God. Sure. All right, Adam, what are you, what are you bringing? Um, I'm taking Knights. Um, I like to do Hipster instead of doing it for before John. Before John gave up on Necrons. <laughs> I, will, I will agree you did that, yes. You totally <laughs> said you were running Knights way before I did. So, but mine is... Uh, Two Gallants, Castellan, uh, the Guard CP battery with, uh, I'm choosing Cadian because that's the models I have. Okay. And uh, with a Griffin because I have that model. A Griffin though? So what is What house are you running though? Oh, don't get there. Relax. Yeah, well, well yeah. I want to know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, hold. I'm going to let the you Griffin, finish, John. I'm going to let you finish. The Griffin is, I'm going to let uh, you finish, but my night house is the greatest of all time. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 Griffin, the Griffin is, um, now it's a Forge World model, but it, it was a model in 5th edition. And it's basically a, a mortar on a Chimera body. This one is Strength 6, minus 1, D3 damage. Uh, D6 shots, roll 2 dice, take the highest. Hmm. And because it's Katie and I, and I reroll ones if I stand still, and it ignores it, you don't get a cover save. Oh, cool. 48 range. That's so good. It's, that's a good infantry so, color. Yeah. Infantry you know, I just park it somewhere and it has a heavy bolter and it just does whatever. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think I have one mortar with the Cadians because <laughs> I can only fit one mortar. Uh, the two commanders, same thing. Um, but I also have a Blood Angel battalion with the, s- the blade angels? yeah the slam captains three squads the three uh scout squads scout you squads. mean the, the smash guinor and slam guineas <laughs> sure whatever please stop talking that's my favorite nickname um, for them i didn't come up with that you didn't come up with that <laughs> god damn it <laughs> um i'm going with house terran is that a questorus that's a questorus it's not a mechanicus um and the reason i don't know and we t- i we kind of talked to john about it that because I don't because I'm using up all three of my detachments. Otherwise, if I was doing John's list, I would go Terran with the gallants. Gallants and then do is Terran the one where you roll the extra dice and yeah. drop it. Terran drop is you roll the extra dice for advance and charges and you drop the lowest. Yeah, that's really good. And then uh, they also have a stratagem that is house specific that lets you fight again. Oh, sick. But it says after the night fights, not at the end of the fight phase. Oh, okay, that's neat. Sorry, I got really distracted by John shooting his own horde on the chat. What did he do over there? He posted a... I'm talking about I fucking knew you were doing that, too. (laughs) What? So John's always been very proud of his painting ability. Oh my, Whether my, my speed painting ability. Yes. Let's be clear on that. And Is someone, that your, art, your frontline article about yeah. painting an army in yeah. five days? Yeah. And so he, someone posted in the chat, I believe, yeah, it was zero charisma and was like, dude, John, you're painting out of the pot, man. It's giving me stress. <laughs> you're painting out of the pot. For some reason, people don't like that. But I keep my brush slightly wet. Yeah. That, that's as you read, Do my secret. Like <laughs> and then he immediately was like, look, here's my caliber. Here's my links. Here's my caliber. Here's my LinkedIn. I was like, here's the here's the link to my article I wrote about painting. Here we go. About me. <laughs> about me. <laughs> here's my link about me. Oh my god. Although I, I I begrudgingly will admit that quick glance I got at your salamanders. I'm admitting nothing. My salamander army was was fucking legit. What's a Pixar salamander? didn't have her. I don't What's know. a salamander? Exactly. Uh, until it's, it's, until it's Vulcan, a, Vulcan decides to show up in the it, game, it's a I don't command care. tank. It's a command tank in Imperial Guard. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, I painted a uh, Vulcan, a Forge World Vulcan. 
Yes, he did. And it sold on eBay for two and a half times the amount the model was. So, $300? Well, it depends what you paid for it. Well, yeah, what, what year, was, <laughs> what year okay. was it? Was the exchange rate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, continuing on. So, anyway, it's, yeah. so SoCal it's, expansion, get so ready. So it's uh, yeah. four it's, spheres. So it's, to come. so it's the Slam Captains, the Scouts. Uh, I go Terran because they have that stratagem, uh, the fight against stratagem. That's cool. I didn't know and that. then uh, Warlord trait. I usually pay the and if mine is nineteen uh, command points, but I use but I use half of them when I before the game starts. Yeah. This is and that's why. So, yeah. so I give uh, the I normally give the Castella and the Iron Ball work and the uh, that's the four plus plus. That's the I think yeah Iron Ball work or the, the he's two plus four plus basically. Oh okay yeah. Two plus four plus plus, and then um, I give uh, the one of the Gallants. Sanctuary, the five plus melee. the five plus yeah, in, that's in melee, move. and then he gets long strider for his warlord trade. Nice, that's a good one. So yes, yeah, so it's the plus so two to advance and charge. Yeah, that's so good. And then I just go balls to the walls, whether I go first or second, and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, see, so I, I didn't look. copy you completely. My knights are totally different. True. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it really, it really quite, is. Quite different. And I plan on only playing three games before the tournament, so we'll see whether. My natural skill will come to the fore. I plan on playing many more than that. Just made it. Make sure to you know what is it? What is it? Microwave, ye old cup. Oh, that's for chaos though. That's not for. They're sick. They're turning. Just no. say that they're turning. Right, chaos. The, you put it in the freezer. In the freezer. <laughs> the reverse. <laughs> if if anyone wants to go back and listen to that episode, there's they explain why the water is the chaos and why they don't have a microwave. <laughs> yeah, no. I was there. Nobody wants to do that. <sighs> no, but not anymore. All right. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so Jeff has, Jeff, Jeff has to go to sleep because he's a responsible adult, unlike the rest of us. Yeah. Sure. Sure. No, I just want to get another drink, and I don't want to... He doesn't want to talk anymore. Fair enough. Yeah. Don't talk. Dave, I'm not the one who brought up the tangent this time. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of tangents on this show, so if you got to the end... That's what we do, so is much. tangent radio. He acts, he acts surprised. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean... Because he never listens to our fucking show, that's why. <laughs> He only watches on <laughs> on Twitch and not yeah. for the whole show. And he falls asleep at with her. No, I don't. I just he leave playing, as you guys or, are on a tangent. He's got it on the side. He's playing I PUBG. just leave. He just goes watch something else. Yeah, playing PUBG tangent, or go, Fortnite or something. I go not hobby, you know. I want to go. Yeah, I don't. I only accept parallels, never tangents. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the plan. No. Yeah, and we hope you guys will. Um, here, one of the things I'm actually to put out to the listeners is. Comment on the the thread. I don't know how you do it because I'm not a TFG dude, but uh, get us your infor- in, input on on skill practice you'd like to see yeah. on potential um, uh, stream enemy stream games you'd like to see. I.e., who Tom plays, what army he plays. Yeah. If you think that there's one that's particularly prevalent and would be cool to see, let us know. Um, you know, this is something that would be. Uh, cool for the community to get involved in and yeah. kind of like input on Tom's list to input on his uh, progress as he moves toward the SoCal Open, you know, get the community involved. So if you have any comments or suggestions, please shoot them to TFG Radio somehow. Yeah, so and, like, uh, I mean, we're you, can gonna, all, you can also comment on the, when the episode drops on on the yeah. iTunes. Yeah, you can comment on the episode, yeah, when the episode drops. Facebook. Uh, we'll be posting the video links from YouTube on TFG Radio's Facebook page. You can comment on there. If you're in the middle of your day, we haven't posted anything yet, or you're in between postings, you have an idea, just write down, like, hey, guys, I got this idea for the SoCal expansion. Try this. Or send can us, I see just this? Send us a message through Facebook. Yeah, or post it, you know, because then that means, you know, it's popular and it's there and it's visible and it becomes a discussion if you want it to be. If you want it to be something that you yourself want to do, chat with us one-on-one, just send us a message. Uh, so yeah, I mean, just communicate if you want to, however you want to, um, except for pigeons. We still haven't trained ours to come back yet. So shut the fuck up. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was seamless. And uh, we're gonna end the show on that horrible joke. What? Why? <sighs> Cut it. What are you talking about? Pigeons is a good joke. This is why he's just labeled as guest. No, this is why people know me as guest. <laughs> People refer to me as that guest that comes on. Oh, God. Okay, well, we're going to end on that because Tom just killed it. And not yes. in a good way either. Hey, I mean, I, I got to work on Thanks for listening. 
Uh, if you're gonna be at B- if you're gonna if you're gonna be at BAO, come by come by and say hi. We'll have our shirts on. Yep. 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 Right. You, know, you have a shirt. I have a shirt. I, I won't be. I won't what be. What did a, you say? The biker, biker cuts. cuts. We gotta get the yeah, patch yeah, back. Yeah. Red full. God. I I want to actually get so, another shirt to get a biker cut. Look, I want that. You need it. I know. For sure. For sure. So, but yeah, I, I won't be at BAO. White in my life. No, I'll be at SoCal. Jeff Adam and I will be there. If you see me at SoCal, it'll probably want to be when I take up smoking again. You'll see me outside in between rounds. So, because that's when the realization that you're married fully hits. No, it's the realization that I will have to go to the internet after SoCal, and everybody will be like, <laughs> "How'd you do?" And I'll be like, "I either have to say five and one or two and four, and one of those is going to make me play Malfo. So I'm not sure which." So, okay, that's a recurring joke that I make. That's a better joke than the previous one. Fair enough. All right, I'll take With that. With that, ladies and gentlemen, good night. Thank you for tuning.